Good evening and welcome. Hang on one sec. <laughs> 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 Off to a great start. Welcome to the Thanksgiving with Sola and Andrew from the BCU mm -hmm. special edition live stream cook along Thanksgiving. Once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. Thanksgiving brought to you by Blue Moon. But you're only going to get these flavors once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> This, this live stream is sponsored by Blue Moon. We want to thank them for sponsoring this live stream, and we encourage you to cook along with Blue Moon this Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to be making four dishes together. Yes. Um, that pair really well with Blue Moon. Andrew, you're going to be roasting a turkey. Doing a whole bird. Spatchcock. Yes, spatchcock, uh -huh. which it's going to be kind of a gory process, so... I, it's what I live eyes. off of. Yeah. I'm yeah. thrilled to watch you, you break down. Snapping. I love the yeah, yeah, yeah. snaps, the cracks, the pops. Snap, crack, well, that's probably trademarked, but we're not going to say Just all kidding. three of those in a row. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but uh, yeah, you, you're doing like a nice spiced butter? Spiced butter, yeah, I'm going to make a spiced compound butter, rub it underneath the skin. Mm -hmm. It's full of coriander and, and cumin. These are spices that are going to play nices with. Blue Moon, it's going to be nice. I love spices that play nicest. Oh, this orange is just flavorful. I think we need to start drinking the Blue Moon. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's have yeah, it yeah. here. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to our sponsor. Mm -hmm. And we want to remind you, not remind, announce to you guys, <laughs> you haven't heard this yet, that all mm -hmm. Super Chats are being given to charity. Yep. All the Super Chats are headed yep. to Action Against Hunger. And Blue Moon is matching those donations up to $10,000. Yeah, it's a great charity. They help um, feed people over 50 countries. So um, especially during the holidays right now, there's some people who don't have as much. So if you can give, give. And if you yeah. super chat, we're probably going to see it. So yeah. if, you, if you give to the super chat, you're going to have a better chance to have Ask us hear a weird your question. question. Ask a weird question. Well, Where does you want? <laughs> if you want to find out Within if Andrew's reason. wearing pants right now, super chat. It's the only way you're going to find the out. The only way you're going to find out. Is to give to charity. That, yeah. It's a great cost. You can also ask yeah. me to do things like take off my pants. Mm -hmm. No, nah, maybe don't do that. Uh, no, maybe for, if it's a lot of money. Who if knows? it's a lot of money, who knows? they max out at five hundred. And frankly, I'm not. I'm staying dressed for five hundred. But I, I don't think you can afford to have me take my pants off. Sorry, guys. No, yeah, sorry. No, no you know what? No pants are coming off this live stream. No, new, new rule. Just new decide. Rule. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah. Hmm. 100% of all the Super Chats, again, are going to Action Against Hunger. Great organization, four out of four stars on mm -hmm. Charity Navigator. Great organization, <laughs> 93 cents out of every dollar given goes into feeding people who need it. Mm -hmm. they, I think they fed six million kids last year or something like that. That's a lot of kids. Don't quote me on that, but it was several many millions of kids. And that's really, that's really awesome. So yeah. your dollars are going to go towards that. Uh, what else we got to go over here? Um, I'm going to make a citrus cake. Inspired by the flavor of the Valencia orange that is inside um, in, the blue, in Blue Moon. Yeah. That's why Blue Moon's a little bit sweet, a little floral, and yeah. it comes from that Valencia orange. So that inspired me to make an upside down orange cake with a really nice caramel made with the Blue Moon and the orange rinds. And then you're going a little crazy with the I, casserole. First, I just want to say I thought that was so <laughs> inspired, the oh. up, orange upside down cake. That sounds so good. I'm really excited to try it. I'm saying like I haven't eaten all of the test batches. Yeah, he's had a lot point. of cake. I can't wait to try it. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, then I'm going to be making a um, sort of hybrid of three different dishes. It's going to be like a queso meets a broccoli casserole meets mm -hmm. a Frito pie. I'm mm -hmm. using your queso recipe, so. It's going to be great. I'm a little nervous, actually. <laughs> um, and, uh, and what else are we making? There's one more thing. You're making I'm a spoon I'm going to do bread. a spoon bread. Yeah. It's, it, it's inspired by Jess's love. Jess is behind camera A today. <laughs> you can't see her, but she's waving. <laughs> um, but she's, she's really into corn casserole for Thanksgiving. This is nothing like corn casserole, but it's slightly inspired by corn casserole, but with an elote twist. So elote is a Mexican street corn that you grill, and then it's brushed with mayonnaise, covered in... Um, lime, cheese, chili. So we're putting all that in a casserole. Citrus, spices, Blue Moon works really good. Yeah, totally. Uh, I thought that was inspired. The spoon. I just love the word spoon bread. Spoon, spoon bread. Spoon yeah. Bread. I mean, why eat bread with your hands when you can eat it with a spoon? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to try eating my next baguette with a spoon, see how, what happens. If you turn it into spoon bread. If you soak it first. No, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, so, and one more time, guys, uh, Blue Moon is matching all of the donations made via Super Chat up to $10,000. So, give today. We're going to make some money today for yeah. people who need it. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, you know, the reason why we're doing this is that Thanksgiving is a little different this year. I don't know if you guys have noticed. It's kind of crazy out there. 
uh, and we you know need to just be responsible and try to stay home and try to you know just and we're not able to have big gatherings and see the people that we might otherwise normally see. So we wanted to hang out with you guys. We wanted to share some recipes. This is a year to try new recipes, try yeah. new things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's great. Um, family's cool, but now we can break away from tradition and make whatever we want. Yeah, you, you, know, know? you don't have to make Uncle Larry happy, who has to have no, his, you just know. just make yourself happy. This Thanksgiving's about you. This thanks <laughs> that's a good way to put it, yeah. This is, <laughs> be selfish this Thanksgiving. It's the one <laughs> shot you got. It's the opposite of what Thanksgiving is. You don't is, have I to think. fly the day before, it sucks. <laughs> and, Stay uh, home, <laughs> you can make eat whatever, whatever you want. You want. Yeah. Have a whole caramel upside down cake to yourself. Just yourself, just no alone. one's gonna judge you, because nobody's there. Exactly. It's, just, it you, it's just us. Yeah, it's just us. We're watching you. <laughs> we can see you through the lens. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should probably get started because this bread's yeah. got to get in the oven. Yeah, yeah. Kick it off. All right. I'm so, ready to watch you spatchcock. Okay. I'm going to eat my orange. Eat your orange. That's what it's there for? I like that it, my drink <laughs> comes with a snack. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's one of the things I love about, about Blue Moon is mm -hmm. that it uh, comes with a little snack. Am I nice and centered here? You know how I feel about symmetry. We good? Okay. Do so, we need a second solo on the other side then? So, uh, oh, yeah, no. Can we get another solo over here? Oh, God. Stand we'll behind mirror. We'll go mirror Yeah, over. or stand behind me. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, so I'm about to demolish this bird okay. right now. Um, this bird does not know what is coming. What I'm going to do is spashcock it, a.k.a. butterfly it, a.k.a. those are the only two names for it. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm snipping out the spine mm -hmm. and I'm pressing the bird flat. And this not only pretty much halves your cooking time. Like we're gonna we're gonna bake we're gonna roast this bird completely in like two hours, uh, but it also uh, it, it 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 makes it helps pr protect the white meat. Yeah. It more exposes the dark meat, gets the thighs up and out, so it's getting more and more heat. So you can you can do a better job of getting these to 165 and getting these to 175. Yeah, yeah, it cooks so much more evenly. So evenly, yeah. so much faster. It's not like the traditional Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving centerpiece, but come on, it's 2020. You want it to taste yeah. good. Yeah. So one thing you kind of do need for this are some big badass shears. Uh, the, you know your craft scissors your, with the safety tips. Not gonna not gonna cut it today. Uh, so what we need to do is turn our bird upside down. And we need to cut out its spine. I love that. For anybody who has a problem with bone snapping like Jess, you might want to mute your... <laughs> Should I get closer so we can get double mic? Should I mic the snaps? A little ASMR jazz here? Here we go. Ready? Ooh. Ooh, crispy. <laughs> Oh, she no. ate it. I'm sorry. <laughs> she got headphones on too. That was mean. She's listening. She's monitoring the audio. All it's right. so satisfying, though, huh? Yeah, it's good. I also feel like you get more crispy brown skin oh, when you absolutely. spatchcock yeah. it. Yeah, because it brown. Everything is browns more evenly. More skin is getting exposed to the heat. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing this with rather an expensive watch on. I'm just remembering. <laughs> So, That's washable, right? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. wash it. It's good. Throw good. in the dishwasher when we're done. No good big uh, deal. Up to ten, uh, up to a thousand feet. That can't be right. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> snip out this spine here. What's mm -hmm. really another thing that I love about this is that you can then cut up the spine. Yes. And use it to make stock or yeah. amp up your, you know, your store bought stock, and you're gonna have a better gravy as a yeah. result. You roast it off. You, you you simmer it with some aromatics and so Jesus. <laughs> well, are, I, I, oh, yeah, these are, uh, these they're, are they're powerful uh, shears, but, you know, sometimes they come apart. <laughs> yeah, they're, just, they're powerful, but not sharp. I can't get through the skin I here. think there it's because okay. I've been using it to cut paper downstairs. You know, You've been using these to cut paper? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just um, prepping it for today, you know? So, but yeah, so, like you always, everyone talks about making your gravy with the drippings, but that's like hard to maneuver a hot turkey. Yeah, no, so this very way much you can so. you can get your gravy going while your turkey's roasting and it's ready at the same time. And you can still keep your drippings, as you shall see. Instead of roasting this in some crazy roasting pan, we're just going to use a sheet pan mm -hmm. with a rack set in it. And then I can fill this with aromatic vegetables, which are not only going to help scent the turkey, but it's going to prevent the drippings from burning, which sometimes if you don't have that many drippings, yeah. just sticks yeah. to the bottom and burns. But if you put all the vegetables in there, they basically, it basically just get more stock at the end of the day. Oh, I man. also like, I prefer roasting turkey, chicken, duck on like a rack like this rather than a high-sided roasting pan because then you get more heating all the way around and more crispy brown skin, which is like the best part. 
that is really the only reason to eat a Thanksgiving turkey is the skin. Like, yeah, I mean, of course. And so often Thanksgiving turkey skin is flabby because people will tent it with foil. And yeah, that, that or bake it in it. a bag. Have you seen that? Bag. What That's crazy. <laughs> That's just not juicy, it. though. It comes but, out but crazy you can't, juicy. Your, your skin is trash. <laughs> Dude, your skin is trash your right now. Your skin is trash. Uh, so I'm, okay, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, <laughs> he did this with dull scissors, so you can do this. If with I can your craft do it, scissors, probably. That's, that's really one of the big take-homes of the channel yeah. is if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> if Sola can do it, you might not be able to. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> she's very, very good at what she does. But it, everything she's doing today, you can do. He's going to nice, set easy me up recipes. for failure. Just wait. <laughs> Just watch and see. I'm not going to give the... Uh, okay, I'm not going to give any spoilers on, on the, the upcoming episode of Stump Sola, but... Um, oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to give any spoilers. So... Okay, last thing to do is I'm going to place a snip right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me Ooh, get I don't this, know this move. detritus out of the way. So one of the things, you got to press it down uh -huh. to get it flat. And to do that, it makes it a lot easier if you just put a little snip right at the base of the breastbone. Oh, I didn't know this move. See, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning, that, you're learning. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact that I could teach you anything to me is uh, frankly incredible. And now I'm not even, even going to... Oh. oh yeah, that's the best part. Gnarly. This is why you should always spatchcock. Deep, deep breaths, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. Is there a place I can put this spine? <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna put the spine to use today. I'm gonna use it to make some turkey stock after the cameras stop rolling. And my favorite part to eat is the Pope's nose. Oh, that, is this what this is called? Yeah, Pope's actually, nose? actually, will you snip it off and throw it on there for me? Oh, for a gross. Snack? Okay. I love it. It's, it's just all skin and fat. This, that is a very anti-Pope sentiment. This is not an attractive object. So I wouldn't want this to be... It, on, on chickens, too, um, I used to work at a place where we would make chicken salad, and we would roast a ton of chickens and put them in the walk-in to cool, and I'd walk in and just rip off all the Pope's noses, and that did would be you, my lunch. Did you get fired for doing that? No, or? no. Okay. No one wanted that part in their chicken salad. It was mine. Well, you just nubble, nibble it off just the bone. Just nibble it off the bone. Nice little nubbins of, of meat there. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, we we'll can share this. that one. That's yeah, yeah, big yeah, yeah. enough for two. Like Lady in the Tramp style would do. Yeah, well, sure. Um, <laughs> if we get enough super chat, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 yeah. Light up those super chats. If we get over $20,000, yeah. we'll eat it like Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> sure, yeah. My Let's girlfriend's see. right there watching. It's fine. My husband's at home watching. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, I need somewhere to put this spine. It's, uh, I can put it on the knees. Okay, well, whatever. Um, so now, ooh, giblet bag. They really oh, got yes. it up in there, damn. Oh, I, you know, I keep losing giblet bags. This How? happened to me the other day. I pulled out like three giblet bags. Okay, so this has happened to me a total of three times where I pull out my giblet bag, there's another one in there and I don't see it until I roast it. Spatchcock, another way to make sure you get your giblet bags. Yeah, there's no giblet bags hiding in there. No, there's, nowhere there's to no hide. hide. No, yeah, yeah, nowhere yeah. to hide here. Uh, the last thing we got to do to sort of get this guy oven ready, besides we're going to hit him with a compound butter. Do you want these for anything? Yeah, let's save them. All right, we'll save them. Have another snack later. Oh, yay. I love eating I love giblets by themselves. Giblet gravy. Yes, no, I like that. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dirty rice. Dirty rice. Uh, giblet stuffing. Giblet stuff? My mom always put the giblets in the that's stuffing. That's a really good idea. Yeah. I just put chestnuts in my stuffing for the first time. and that, I love that. That really rocks. Yeah, I really it's a nice texture. That. And you put, as if you watched the most recent episode of Stump Sola, you put mortadella in your mm -hmm. stuffing, which was wild. I it loved it. It was a spontaneous decision, and I, very, I was very pleased. I think I'm going to do it again. It was really good. I that, think that was one of the best stuffings. That was really good, yeah. yeah. Now, something I'm having a little bit of difficulty doing right now is Ooh. getting under the skin. You know what my favorite way to do it is? Back spoon. of a spoon. Okay, I'll try that. Thank you. Yeah. I just don't want to get in the wrong part here. Yeah, there's like a membrane that you have to puncture. Yeah. Wait, that's not the right part. Hang on. Come on. I, what I really don't want to do is break the skin. There we go. I punctured the membrane. Now, the reason I am very invasively... Uh, that's not graphic at all. Yeah. Are you getting a close-up in this there? This is some People alien really stuff the right here. Yeah, get the a close-up of that. Wow. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, if you separate the skin, it's kind of like a peking duck. Yeah. Where if you separate the skin, it allows the fat to render out more effectively. You end up with crispier skin. Uh, but also, I'm going to be rubbing my compound butter under there. Come on. It's yeah. a little bit of effort, but it's totally worth it. I it's think definitely we've lost it. all the vegetarians. Come back in half an hour. Yeah. Come <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is not going to be this. <laughs> what Ooh, a way to gross. open. Yeah. You know? Welcome. If you're just joining us, <laughs> I'm shoving my fingers in this turkey. <laughs> 
Whew, okay, let me you get the other one You definitely need here. gloves for this. Yeah, I'm going to stop doing that towards camera, and maybe we won't lose so many viewers. How many viewers are we at right now, out of curiosity? About 12,400. Wow, That's hello. pretty good, man. <laughs> That's pretty good. It used to take us a solid hour to get up to them numbers. But it's a special day. Yes, it is a special day. It's a once-in-a-lifetime Thanksgiving. Once-in-a-lifetime Thanksgiving. Uh, any, Come on. Any questions? Yeah, let's get some questions. Yeah. Any super chats coming yeah, in? Yeah, we've got a couple super chats. Okay. We got Sawyer over here. You guys remember Sawyer from live streams of old and in many many episodes. He's my dear friend, business partner. He's going to be fielding your questions today. He's just off camera. Anyway, sorry, I just want to introduce you. Thank you very much. The first super chat we got of the day was Anish Herman asking regular or cornbread dressing slash stuffing? Regular, I think, personally. I, I think it depends on the mood, you know, for me. I can go either way, just like what else is on the table. Like if, if it's a southern style Thanksgiving with macaroni and cheese and collard greens, then I want a cornbread stuffing. See, I, this, for me it just turns into mush. Like I still mm. like having a little bit of definition in my yeah. bread and with, cor with cornbread. It does kind of just fall apart. Yeah, but I, if you call it dressing for some reason, I like it better uh -huh. than if you call it just straight up. I mean, that, I mean, the way you market a dish is important. I think it, it does affect yes. your perception and how you feel about it, but I guess we're split on this one. <laughs> So 50-50, <laughs> sorry, not, right. not getting resolved today. Okay, now I gotta break this membrane here. Wait, where, where do you go in for the, for the thigh? You go in here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's been a little while since I've done one of these joints. The last one I did was on a chicken for practice and that's different. <laughs> yeah, I feel like turkey's a lot tougher. Yeah, chicken is very forgiving. Yeah. There we but, go, I'm in. Yeah. I've hacked the mainframe of the turkey Once thigh. you break the initial bit of skin, I feel like yeah. then it's smooth sailing. There's, it's just that first bit. There's a thin membrane uh, that you first have to get through. And once you're through there, yeah, it's, it's smooth sailing. And this is where we're going to be putting all of our compound butter, mm -hmm. which is going to you know, deeply flavor the meat. It's going to help the, the skin brand get nice and brown. Is there another one by the thigh? It's crazy. Well, it, I also feel like depending on the type of turkey you have, it's a little bit different, like heritage birds, the skin is a little bit more tough and it's a little bit, um, it, 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 it is harder to get in there, but once you get in there, it's not gonna break on you. But a conventional turkey is a little bit more delicate. Oftentimes those turkeys are, um, they're like not dried. Does that make sense? So your skin can break a little bit more easily. They're not, they're not like air chilled? They're not air chilled, yeah. yeah, yeah the okay. air chilled heritage turkey, super sturdy. You can just like shove a spoon in there and it'll be fine. Okay, well, I'm going to trust you on that because I am <laughs> really going at it here. Whew, that is a tough membrane. There we go. There we go. I'm you in, made I'm it. In. There you go. See? Oh, I'm under the meat. Whoops. You know, that <laughs> sometimes that? that happens. It's okay. How did I do that? It's already dead. It is already dead, it's but just I'm just okay. respecting it horribly, and I apologize to you, Turkey. I think that this is a heritage bird because it is putting up a fight. It lived a It lived a, a tough life. life. You know, it, it pecked around. It got to eat grubs and bugs. And um, and you can it can tell, hardy. It's a hardy bird, hardy bird. to be sure. Yeah. You know, this is one of those things that if you're watching me on the show, I would just fast forward through. But isn't this so much better? Isn't you this get to nicer? watch every agonizing moment. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I swear this is going to turn back into a family show any minute now. It's going to be. It's worth it though. It's really worth it to take the time and do this because this is the best way to get crisp skin. And I, I don't really like it when you put the butter on top because a lot of times the milk solids and the butter will burn. Burns, yeah. Yeah. So by putting it underneath, you're going to get all that rich buttery flavor, but no, none of that speckling that you get when you put the butter on top. That's in the thigh. What? <laughs> I'm so lost in this turkey. It's great. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can uh, do another point entry here. I'm going to go in through the breast. Whoa. Where no Here man's go. gone before. <laughs> you know? This Whatever is a bad you idea. gotta do. This is a bad idea. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm gonna rip the skin. I shouldn't do this. It, it, I'm still going. It, it though, looks right? like you're uh, getting in there though. Seems Something's to be happening. It's interesting. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Uh, so close. Do you want to take so a, cra a crack at this? No, I this is a lot more entertaining. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> That's what I thought you were gonna say. I didn't think I was gonna get off that easy. No, this is great. It's it, it's just, you know, this bird lived a life. Yeah, this is a tough bird. Yeah, but it's going to be delicious. Reminds me of, of our new kitten. She's a street kitten. Yes, she was hardened in the streets of Brooklyn. Yes. And um, you can really tell, like, she's tough. She's got energy. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. Not scared, she's not scared of anyone. 
No, sir. She's definitely going to lead the pack. She's already dominating the other two cats, it seems like, right? I, I cannot get in here. <laughs> this is crazy. This is supposed to be easy recipes. It's so easy. Here I am, a hardened professional. <laughs> That's not true. Um, trying to get in here. What's everybody saying about me right now? Really? I want to know the lulls that people are having. Yeah, people like the noise. People like what they see. They like what they see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You like what you see? Let's see. I think you need to find another point of entry. What Maybe, about, ooh, what about, ooh, what ooh, about, oh, did on. you get it? I think so. Or I think I have a good, a good point of entry right here. Right here. Yes! Oh, there you go. You did it. <sighs> Thank you for not taking over. Honestly, that was so, no, it, this is better. so much more satisfying. You know what? You did this faster than when you tried to tie a balloon when we did the chocolate tempering. <laughs> it was the first time. He I, ever tied I a balloon. I never tied a balloon. <laughs> it was taking so long, and I was just like, cool. <laughs> Not one, giving up. It was up. one of those things that I thought, like, you know, maybe I'll die never try, never having tied a balloon. Maybe I could, that can just be, it could be on my, my tombstone. Yeah. He never tied a balloon. I think, like, as a special thing for your Patreons, you should uh, release the full unedited footage of you just trying to tie a balloon. I think we put a lot in there. <laughs> so it, was, it was edited up, but it was still uh, a sizable amount of time. Okay. All right, you I'm did under it. the skin, so You're now skin. I'm gonna make my compound butter. Where'd the butter go? Right. Oh, thank you, thank you, Kendall. Kendall's over, over over there taking care of our mise en place. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Kendall. Can and I assist gonna, you? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's dump all these spices in here. So we have, uh, I think it's like two tablespoons of garlic powder. Cool. Uh, correct me if I'm saying anything wrong as I go. Uh, so what two two teaspoons of cumin? It looks about right. Uh, two teaspoons of paprika. Two teaspoons of cumin. That's not cumin. Coriander. 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 And like the coriander in the blue moon. And that looked like a tablespoon of salt. Did I get that right? Uh, I just I guessed. Paprika, not cayenne. Oh, cayenne. Spicy. Oh, God, we got to make this spicy. Spicy. Southwestern. Spicy. Yeah. All right, now I need a spatula to mix this guy up. Just smush it all together? Smoosh it. Compound butter sounds really fancy, but you're just smushing butter with stuff in it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's not fancy at all. No. And the great thing is you can make your compound butter in advance. Um, like, I like to do like a big batch sometimes, like a pound in a food processor, blitz it up with whatever you're feeling, and then roll it into logs and keep it in the freezer, and then when you want to feel fancy, slice off some... Uh, you know. It's also a great way to sound fancy. Like, you know, if you're cooking for your, for your significant other or something, be like, yeah, I made a compound butter. I rubbed mm -hmm. it underneath the skin, uh, roasted it, you know, spatchcocked mm -hmm. it. These are all these things that make you sound really cool to whoever you're cooking it's for. It's just marketing, guys. It's just butter with stuff. All marketing. It. Yeah, don't believe the hype. We're just trying to sell you cool <laughs> t cooking techniques. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> um, So, oh, you know what? I'm just, just get, your, get your hands get in there. Moosh, moosh What are you doing? Yeah. I am going to put on gloves, though. It's messy. I don't want to get my fingers messy. No, of course, and that watch. Protect the watch. Protect the watch at yeah. all costs. At all yeah. costs, yeah. It was an interesting choice for me to wear that before I did surgery on a turkey. All right, so what I would... That's ooh. what all doctors do. I have five minutes to get this in the oven. Here we go. Yeah, you got this. Let's rock. Now, ideally, you'd want to dry brine your bird. If you're cooking along with us today, mm -hmm. can't do that because, you know, this guy's fresh out the fridge. But if you are making a meal next week, for actual Thanksgiving. Just light coating of salt, good yeah. amount of kosher salt, pepper. Let it sit out in the fridge, not like this, legs hanging off, but out uncovered in the fridge for at least 24 hours. You're gonna dry out the skin, it's mm -hmm. gonna suck up a lot of that yeah. salt, and it's going to get much crispier skin mm -hmm. as a result. Um, what, what are the other benefits of that? Are there, are there other benefits? Well, the salt also kind of starts breaking down the skin a little bit. So you get that more of like a shattery crisp instead of a crunch. Um, and it's really, yeah. it's especially helpful if you're doing like a duck, which has a thicker skin, or um, any kind of heritage bird. All their skins are a little bit thicker, a little bit tougher. So the dry brine helps in so many ways. And you're just sprinkling salt on something and letting it sit. It's another thing where it sounds a lot fancier than it actually is. Yeah, dry brining is literally, yeah, just salting and putting it in the fridge. S salt, yeah. I, I, I didn't know the name dry brine until a couple of years ago. I feel like it was just called seasoning. I think it's all thanks to J. Kenji Lopez-Alta. Is he the one? I think he He's very good at the branding yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, you're talking about heritage birds. You ever get a chicken that's like bright yellow? Yeah, yeah I love the like I love the yellow fat chickens. Yeah. Oh, I wish. I feel like they have this like depth of flavor. Oh, they're incredible. Yeah. It's like I, I, when we one time we went to Paris. Uh, uh, they were selling the roast ones in the street, and they got nothing but salt and pepper on them. Mm -hmm. They're so flavorful. They're so good, yeah. Here in the States, we got to shove this stuff under the skin, otherwise it's going <laughs> to taste like nothing. Yeah. Um, so, okay, we have our compound butter here. I, I finally stopped being being precious and, and just, got, it just, up. Yeah, just got in there. So now what I'm going to do is get that under the skin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to really try to distribute it underneath the skin. Get a big old chunk in there. You really can't overdo it. It's all going to melt out anyway, so you might as well yeah. go big or go home. And I don't think you need to even, don't get too freaked out about making it perfectly even, because as soon as it gets in there and it's warm, it'll yeah. it'll even out. It's just going to distribute throughout. Yeah. I'm trying to use all of it. Like, I want to use every good to the last drop here. Yeah, for sure. So, I'm sorry for more very graphic YouTube television. I mean, that's why they're here. That's why you're here. This is mm -hmm. why you're here. We, mm -hmm. we know you're here to see this, this crazy. I need a little bit more there to sort of get down the side. You can sort of peek in there too and see what kind of job you did. There we go. Yeah, and like, I, I also like to just yeah, even just it out once. Press it out, yeah, yeah, from the top too. I just don't want to get this all over it because again, if you put butter on the outside, it sounds nice, it's but not in nice. fact, don't do it. Yeah, you won't do it twice. Sounds nice, won't do it twice. Uh, sometimes I do like to do a little clarified butter Ooh, on the outside. Yeah, because there's no uh, milk fats. There's milk no milk solids. solids. Yeah, clarified butter, you just you take regular whole butter, simmer it um, until all the water evaporates, and then the milk solids kind of just sink to the bottom, and then you strain it out, and then you can use it just like oil. Mm. And so that's like a fun thing. You could do the whole butter underneath, clarified butter on top. So much butter. Yeah, I mean, clarified butter is really something worth making. Like yeah, it's really, yeah. You definitely. can buy ghee, which is it's just, it's just clarified That's butter. clarified butter, yeah. Uh, and that makes it a little easier, but, you know, if you, if you do it yourself, you can control what butter you're using. You can, yeah. you know, and it's just so nice to have around the house because it's like you can cook with butter like it's olive oil. Yeah, yeah, you know, for you sure. Really, you can get it really ripping yeah. hot. I'm going to keep going here because I really want this guy to be stuffed with southwestern flavor. Uh, so it'll go nicely I mean, with our blue moon. Yeah, for sure. And I'm going to really press it down in there. There we go. I'm going to grab some things to sanitize for our next, once the bird has departed. Oh, I got sanitizer. Oh, you got it. Right You're ready there. to go. Huh? But, huh. And I'm going to have to take it okay. off the tray because I need to put some vegetables underneath it. Oh, okay. Do you need so. a second tray? No, no, I'm good. Okay. All right. I'm just going to make sure that I use all this because, again, I really want this thing stuffed with flavor. Because turkey, let's face it, it's a little bland. You know? Yeah. It's kind of the worst part of Thanksgiving, if you ask me. I, I mean, I know people who really like turkey. I personally am not a big turkey person, even like the fanciest turkey. I got, I got a really fancy turkey earlier this year because I was testing some recipes. Too fancy. Mm. Tasted too much like turkey. That, I can picture that. It'd be like too strong of that like, like, really poultry-like flavor. I just took my gloves off, so this was point, that, that was pointless. But I'm just going to turn this. There we go. Ooh, Ooh. gross. <laughs> big old hunk of butter just fell out. Yeah. And uh, now I'm just going to... Little trick that I like to do is first off, I do like roasting it on a sheet tray like this. Ooh, some detritus down here. Thank you. Um, I like roasting on a sheet tray like this because you know roasting pans can be. Th 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 this wouldn't fit in any roasting pan that I have. And then um, they block so much of the heat with yeah, those high sides. Exactly. I don't know what those pans are for. I, I guess yeah. for like a roast. Yeah, hot I love roast. Yeah, I love them for a braise. I like them for a yeah, pot roast. they're good yeah. for a braise, but yeah. for actual roasts. I, I, all I end up doing is just suspending it above yeah. the pan. Uh, but they're great for catching drippings and stuff. But speaking of which, we're going to catch all of our drippings by filling this guy with way too many. <laughs> um, uh, some mirepoix. <laughs> uh, got some mirepoix, which is just, we got rough chopped mm -hmm. onions, carrots, and celery. And this is not only going to scent the bird a little bit, mm -hmm but also it's going to catch all those drippings that might normally drip on the bottom and just burn. If yeah. you don't have enough drippings, it's just going to burn. But this is going to catch those. It's going to prevent them from burning. And it's going to give them a whole lot of flavor. It's like you're mm -hmm. making your own stock right now with this. It's a fantastic, like, symbiotic relationship. Yes. The vegetables flavor the meat. Meat flavors the vegetable. Everybody wins. 
This is what every Boom. relationship should be like. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just like a turkey over some mirepoix. Yeah. That's how Jess and I like to describe our relationship in our wedding vows. So right? romantic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so <laughs> I'm going to say that when we get married. I'm going to say, like, <laughs> being with you is just like being a turkey Perhaps suspended turkey above mirepoix. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm just going to stop using gloves because why not? So next thing you want to do is tuck the wings like this. Yeah, you don't underneath. want those guys to burn. Yeah, because these guys will burn real fast. Yeah. So we're tucking the wingtips right underneath the turkey. And you can see it's kind of a strange looking immodest thing. It's like, it's, just, it's going to cook a lot There's faster. no modesty left after, after what we've seen you do to this turkey. That's true. Yeah, no, I've yeah. lost all of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I just need to wipe my hands off real quick. And then last thing I'm going to do is season the outside as well. Sorry for reaching. I apologize. No worries. Reaching is so rude and something that we don't I don't really know talk why about it's anymore. rude. I don't care. <laughs> so I'm just hitting this guy with salt and pepper. So much. So pepper just flies out of this thing. Yeah, this pepper grinder rules. I don't think we can talk about it because of, we have another sponsor right now. But <laughs> it's an amazing pepper grinder. Keep an eye out for it on my Instagram. It's great. You're a fan of pepper. I'm a huge fan of pepper. i got to be honest. Freshly ground pepper, that is and kosher salt. People know how I feel about kosher salt. We've already got some in the compound butter, so we're really, what we're doing is just mm -hmm. seasoning the skin right now. We yeah. that skin nice and salty. I do, at least, personally. Yeah. Uh, and I probably should have hit this with oil or something on the outside so it sticks better. You can better, still hit it now. Whatever. Uh, wh what's up? Oh, there, mm, whoops, there oh, it is. Oh, well, yeah. well. Okay. Is this butter? Oh, we just said no butter on the outside. Here, I, you know what I'll do? I'll uh, hit it with some, got some nice neutral oil here. I'm just going to give it a little rub down before it heads into, well, too much. <laughs> and if people want to set this up, all you have to do is just do this the night before. Yeah, if you do this the night before, uh, you're going to have a really, really moist turkey. Yeah. You're going to have really crispy skin. Uh, and it's just going to be a better experience all around. Yeah. Do, and also, you won't have to do this the day of. You won't have to yeah, worry about it. You just got to throw it in the oven. It's, no big it's, deal. It's like a really nice thing to get out of the way. And yeah. um, the, the spices are going to like flavor the meat a lot better. Everything's just going to get to know each other. You need time for all good relationships to bloom. It's cooking is like relationships, mm -hmm. as, as I'm discovering right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, uh, I think so. Well, I'm going to get this guy in the oven. You want right. to get started on Yeah, we're going to get going on some cake. 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 All right, cake time. Cake time. I'm going I'm to step off camera for a second here. I'll be right, right back, folks. So after working with chicken, we so must sanitize. So let us do a little, a little uh, zhuzhing up our station. It's very important to work clean, especially when you've got poultry. But um, yeah, we've got a little sanitizer down here. Thank you, Kendall. Can I give you this too? Thanks. Just wash my hands, folks. Be right back. Got to get all that turkey off of me. I'm all alone. It's just me. I'll, I'll be right back. They can hear just, me still. Just spritzing <laughs> away. Um, may I have a little paper here, towel? Here, I got it. This is my mess. I'll clean it up. <laughs> okay. There we go. Always sanitize your Always work sanitize surfaces. Always sanitize your work surfaces. You can yeah. use a sanitizer like we just used, mm -hmm. or a mixture of white vinegar, water, and hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. Maybe don't take my word on that. I don't know about that. Yeah, it's, well, just, it just sounds for safety's good. sake. Put just, a, just bleach. Can we, can we put a, a lower third that says Andrew doesn't know what he's talking about? Thank you. Are All you right. doing that right now, live? <laughs> no. Wow, the technology. <laughs> All right, so okay. this is sanitized and ready for you. Okay. So I'm going to use a mixer just to make it a little bit faster, but if you don't have one, you can totally do this by hand. You're just going to get a little sweaty. I don't, I don't feel like getting sweaty right now, you know? You use a, a hand mixer too, right? Hand mixer, spoon, whatever you've got, you know? This will work. We'll make this work for you. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little chop in here. I'm going to ruin your symmetry. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I always prioritize He's going to start freaking out a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, I can sip beer after that. Workout I got with this turkey. Is I didn't even put it in the oven yet. What so am I doing? Right there. Okay, All right, so cool. I'll keep you guys entertained while Sola's gone. Um, what did the cow say to the. Oh, hi. Hello, I've returned. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to make this in a 10 inch cake pan, but you could totally do it in a skillet as well. Whatever you've got, no oh. big deal. We're going to start by smooshing some butter around. I love smooshing butter. I love smooshing butter. Half of these recipes are about smooshing butter officially. That's what Thanksgiving oh. is it's a time to smoosh butter. And I guess not see your loved ones this year. 
Oh, well, <laughs> you can see us. We're hanging. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like to, so we got two tablespoons of butter here, mm. and we want to kind of get a nice, like, caramelized crust. So I'm doing most of the butter on the bottom, mm. and then just a little on the side to help us get a good release from the pan. Make sure it pops out, yeah. Make sure it comes out, yeah. Um, it, it'd be really tragic for it to be stuck in this one in particular because I feel like it'd be very hard to get out. Yeah, of. there's a lot. There's there's going to be some caramel at the bottom, so we want to make sure that comes out cleanly for you. So easy peasy. I'm not even look. It's not even perfect. It doesn't matter. It'll be fine. A lot of butter though, which is great. It's yeah, gonna, it's going to taste great. Now we got two tablespoons of sugar. Yeah. I'm just going to sprinkle this across. I forgot that we need to take a quick uh, beer break. Oh yeah, let's do much. that. I'm going to throw the turkey in the oven. You finish that up, and then we'll take a quick beer break. Yeah. Can you pop this up? And my pan, pan is prepared. So Thank if you don't you. have a pan, use a skillet. You can even do this in a Dutch oven. Ooh. Use whatever you have that's like around uh -oh. 10 inches. Maybe this Oops. Go up top. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. That's gonna brown real fast. Wipe off my hands real quick. Prepare for our beer break. You know, it's very important. Cooking for Thanksgiving should be fun. So I think that, you know, don't stress yourself out. Make sure you plan some breaks in there, right? Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta plan breaks in there. You gotta plan breaks in there. Especially beer breaks. Like, what better way to? Uh, I can't think take of a, a better break way. From cooking. No. You can leave that out here. Come on. Is this bothering you? How oh, unsymmetrical un, 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 it is. Not at all. I, I I'm I'm learning to uh, to to be adaptable uh -huh. when it comes to my symmetry and my Wes Anderson presentation. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So the turkey's in the oven. Let's look at our schedule. <laughs> so. Uh, the rub. We yeah. designed the rub to go well with the Blue Moon because mm -hmm. it's got coriander in it, and you are I mean, your your recipes have a lot of citrus going on. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we went southwestern. Mm -hmm. That was the original inspiration. I feel like when I when I take a sip, I get so much like orange blossomy vibes. Yeah. Or like you know like the the aroma of the the rinds and the rest zest. So that's what I love about putting the orange wheel on there because you just pick it up. I just like eating it. Yeah, I don't know. I like I the snack. That. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was in the brand notes, but they should really have that be part of this. A the, drink and a snack, guys. Yeah, a drink and a snack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's not in their marketing materials. We're, we're it over is here now. figuring it out. Yeah. Um, so uh, 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 why did we choose Southwest? I don't know. Our brains just went there, you know, because the, the citrus makes me think of bright. Yeah. Southwest makes me think of bright. It's very bright. Down bright. There. Absolutely. And, and I do think that this is a beer that goes really well with spice because there is a hint of sweetness. It's not, it's not a, it's, it's light, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's very light. Very light. You can drink this all day. I really appreciate that about it. Yeah. We're going to drink it all live stream, so. Yeah. It's well, got to be light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good one for when you're in the kitchen all day cooking and it's hot. Yeah. It's and it is refreshing. getting quite hot in here. I might go adjust the thermostat while you get <laughs> started on the cake. Uh, yeah. I just want to remind everybody that all of the Super Chats are being donated to Action Against Hunger. And Blue Moon is matching those donations up to $10,000. Yeah. So, Super Chat away. Maybe we should, uh, is there, should we take questions now? Is now a good time? Good for me. Let's hear some super chats. All right, Fiore asks, as a Mainer, what are the top global foods you would add to your ultimate Thanksgiving setup? I should have said that as a Mainer, she includes seafood. As a Mainer, yeah. like from Maine? As a Mainer, yeah. I've literally oh, never heard that word before sorry, in my sorry, life. Sorry. Hello, Mainers. Mainers. Yeah. I, I thought they were called like maniacs. Ma maniac. Oh, oh yeah. maniac That's is good. good. Yeah, as a maniac. <laughs> as a maniac, as a native mani maniac. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, I lost the question entirely. What global food you would include in your ultimate Thanksgiving setup? Well, I had an aunt who would always do, so um, when you cook basmati rice, you can either cook it like a pilaf, or a lot of people like to parboil it first, mm. and then you can steam it really quickly yeah. and then you can do a lot of different things with it like stuff it in cabbage or make tadig and what she would do is she would steam the rice um, and then add some saffron and shove it inside the turkey Ooh. and then it would finish cooking with the turkey that sounds amazing and it's really delicious and you get this saffrony aroma in your turkey and i feel like it's a really cool blend of cultures that's a really good idea yeah it's really good really easy try that yourself guys. yeah just make sure you take the temperature of the rice inside it must be 165 inside. That the makes stuff. perfect sense. Yeah. Whatever you're shoving in your turkey, it has to be 165. Yeah. Okay, that's the disadvantage to shoving things in turkeys is that you have to yeah. get them up to temp, and then by that time, sometimes the meat can dry out. But that's a really cool idea for a stuffing. Mine's gonna be way more simplistic answer. I love Japanese milk bread. Oh, that's and that's dinner, nice. dinner rolls yeah. are a huge part yeah. and oft overlooked. And they'd be center stage if you made Japanese milk bread. Hokkaido, I think, is the kind of. Uh, that sounds right. I don't. 
I'm bad um, with words. Google that. <laughs> no, uh, uh, that's already smelling kind of good. Um, I'm going to turn this light on. I just like the way it looks in the background. Is that cool? Okay, I like that. It's homier, you know? All right. Uh, Should I get going on the caramel? She takes a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. And while you're doing that, I, you could either talk about what you're doing or I can take some questions or whatever you want to do. Yeah, well, okay, Here so I'm going to start by, so we're going to do upside down orange cake. Could you hand me a knife, please? Absolutely. What kind of knife do you want? You know, a sharp one. Okay. Yeah. This Babish knife. Wow. Be nice, like, Babish knife. Oh, it better be sharp. So we're going to start by supreming our orange. A lot of these cakes, they put the full, um, they just slice it with the rind on and put it at the bottom, but I really want to get as much flavor from that orange rind as possible. So I'm going to add the rind to my caramel, and it kind of candies and gets jammy, which I think is really cool. So if you haven't supremed, as you can see, I took the bottom and top off. So we have a nice, stable work surface, like and then... Orange fondants. Yeah, yeah, and we're just going to curve with the orange. Whoops, I did a bad job on the first one. Curve, curve with the orange. Oops. We'll, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it in post. Fix it in post, yeah. And we're just going to take the rind off in these big hunks, and then I'm going to slice up the rind and cook it in my caramel. This sounds delicious already. This and sounds amazing. Yeah, and then we get a lot of orange flavor. And the caramel has um, Blue Moon in there, too. Now, what, why, other than the fact that that makes perfect sense, like uh -huh. a beer caramel, and especially a light, uh, uh, cloudy uh, wheat beer like this would make perfect sense, is there any scientific reason you might want to yes, use Yes, uh, there beer? is. Funny you should ask. Um, so a lot of times when you're making a caramel, it's very easy for it to crystallize. That's why Big a lot time. of yeah, a lot of caramels have a little corn syrup in there to help you. Corn syrup is an invert sugar. Mm. Um, so an invert sugar is basically when the sugar is processed with a little acid, and that kind of breaks down those glucose chains. I could get really weird. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop getting so technical. No, no one wants all this. Anyways, the beer does that. The beer is going to kind of break down the sugar so it doesn't crystallize. It's, it's caramel cheat code because yeah. caramel crystallizes so if you look at it wrong. Yeah, if you just swirl it too much yeah, yeah. or splash up the sides. So this is going to be like really foolproof. If you haven't made caramel before, putting a little beer in there now, really helps. How, what kind of caramel are we going for so it doesn't burn in the bottom? Is it like a very young caramel? I, I like to take I like, I like to make, take it a little dark. I mean, I personally. do love dark caramel. I like a toasty caramel, but I think I you can do whatever sugar. you want. I do too, yeah. Like it's one, that was one of my favorite snacks that my mom would make it. Make me. She would literally just caramelize sugar, pour it out onto a pan, break it up. Delicious. And, and fade it to Instant me. Instant candy. Cut, my mouth would get cut open. Uh, <laughs> but it was always like really dark caramel. It was like super uh, uh, caramelized, you might say. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I like to go. I like to go until it smells smoky. And that's when I... That's when I, I like to push it. Let's do it. Th let's do that with this one. Yeah. So I'm just going through and slicing this up like mm, an eighth of an inch. Just and to maximize flavor. Well, I want I want the rinds to get nice and tender and mm. jammy. I, I really don't like um, I don't like just biting into raw. Oh, the rinds rind. stay in the caramel. Oh yeah, the rinds are staying oh, in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I help? Do you want me to? Can I do? do oh yeah. Sure. We'll yeah, knock it out faster. together. I'll use this this bad boy. It's and we can just knife. do the chop and drop right into our pot where we're gonna carry it. You're literally just yep. like this. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind that white pith. I like the bitterness. Yeah. I think it really helps balance out the cake. And then also the beer is gonna give like a, just a hint of bitterness that I think is really nice with the caramel. Am I doing any of this? Uh yeah, why the hell not? Go I don't know. This, All right. It's just like it's almost like we're making marmalade. Oh man, and I mean Mar Marmalade's kind of an acquired taste at first because it's so bitter. But I, I didn't like it, it as so a kid, but yeah, now exactly. it's my favorite like preserve type so thing. So good, and it goes so well with savory cooking as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a real, it's a real uh, multi-tool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, what's your favorite Thanksgiving dessert? Would you say besides pecan this? pie? Ooh, that's a favorite. Absolutely. I, 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 I think I only have it around Thanksgiving because it is just you're just eating a candy bar. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> There's so many things where, where I'm just like, oh, well, it's Thanksgiving. I can eat another serving of sweet potato pie and I don't think I'm going to do together. pecan pie this year, though. Why is that? Because I don't like leftover pie, and I don't think we can eat a pie between the two of us in one night. Oh, not with that attitude, you can't. <laughs> yeah. But this folks. cake is going to stay really moist for a few days, so you can eat this for like a whole week. Um, we're also putting some Blue Moon in the cake. Yeah. And the acidity from the Blue Moon does exactly what buttermilk does to a cake. Ooh, so it's going to add that kind of like tang and... and yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to add some tang. It's going to make it really tender and um, 
the effervescence gives it some lift too. So it's it's a win 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 oh, win. Because yeah, it reacts, the acid reacts to the leaveners yes. or something. Yeah, totally. I, I'm paying attention to when you talk to me about stuff. <laughs> All right, so here I'm adding, what is it? A cup? That looks like a cup. Cup, cup of blue moon, a cup and a quarter of sugar, and we're just gonna get it simmering on like rapid heat. Aggressive. Here, sorry, I got more. Oh, for oh yeah, there's more. There's more. And and. You don't really have to do anything. Like normally when you're doing a caramel, you gotta brush down the sides, you gotta be super careful. Stress you gotta make free. sure you don't you don't like wobble it around. But we don't have to do a thing because the um, the acidity in the beer is gonna make sure that it does not crystallize. This makes me nervous. <laughs> Let's move the mise plate right off <laughs> Let here. Me Here's grab the that salt. salt. Yeah. yeah. You so, want your tiny spatch? Yes. There you go. So once the once okay. that's nice Thank and you. dark brown, and I like to take it till it's a little bit of smoke, um, we're gonna pull that off and add butter and salt. Now, the flesh, we're gonna slice this into rounds and throw it on the bottom of our pan. I like to go just, just shy of a quarter inch. I like it kind of thin. I feel like it eats really nicely, and I want it to caramelize as well with the sugar we lined the cake tin with. Ugh. And if you wanna get super fancy, you could do suprems. You can do whatever you want here. What are suprems? Suprem is where you go in between the flesh and remove the, remove just the, in between the pith and remove just the flesh. But um, this is a lot easier. You, you like know? the pith, so. Eh, you know, whatever you're in the mood for. Yeah. You want pith, keep it in there. You don't want pith, take it out. Who cares? That sounds really hard anyway. It sounds like a real. It's an advanced yeah. knife skill, for sure. <laughs> now for is, sure. Th is this something that you could maybe assemble ahead of time and then bake the day of? Yeah, but it's also very moist. You could totally just bake it oh. the day of. No problem. Okay. okay. I like to break up my segments because I think it's kind of pretty for it to be random. Can we lose these? Are these? Yeah, we can, we can lose those. Okay. They've served their purpose. Right. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Protecting our, our orange until we need it. Um, you could do perfect little rounds, but I find, I don't know, I never get it perfect, so I'm like, why even try? Yeah. Right? That's my whole life philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Never get it perfect. No, so try? don't don't try. Just like if you're intentionally imperfect, then it's cool. Yeah, then you meant to do it. So if even if you didn't slice this very neatly, it doesn't even matter. It's gonna look artful now. Yeah, art. It already looks like art. Wasn't it? Modern art. Don't even try. It's very millennial, isn't it? Yeah, I know. This is. <laughs> <laughs> we can relate to you kids out there. We're, wait, no, millennials aren't. We are anymore. millennials. Oh, yeah, we are millennials. <laughs> We're just old ones. We can relate to our own generation, kind of. Kind of, yeah, sure. <laughs> Depends. So, wow, look at that. See, doesn't it look like I'm making something pretty, but I'm really just ripping it up? I mean, that, that's how you make something pretty sometimes. You gotta rip it up, you know? Yeah, like, you know how some pastry chefs slice their cakes all neat? That's really difficult. Yeah. So when I was a pastry chef, I would just break my cake with my hands. Just break it? Yeah, just How do you break cake? Just give people a torn off piece of cake. That's a very interesting and choice. And people thought it was, oh, it's so, it's so artistic. It's like, no, man, I just can't slice cake. Yeah, there was probably an article in Eater about it or something. Probably. Like, this pastry chef rips her rips cake. Rips her cake with her fists. Okay, see? And, and we didn't really have to stress about making it even or anything. No, that was, so, that was easy peasy. Yeah, I'm gonna let that chill and now we're gonna start whipping up, whipping up our cake batter. Whip up the cake batter. I'm gonna wipe down the uh, surface a little bit. Thank you. For, to wipe for your assistance. No problem. Happy, always happy to see. So normally I, I don't recommend you really stir a caramel, but this one, it's fine. Do whatever you want. Now you, you, you went like this. Huh? You went like this when you said you don't recommend stirring caramel. I did? Yeah, didn't you? Okay, I thought you were showing off a scar, a battle oh, scar. Oh, <laughs> no, okay, but. I, I got excited. I thought I was like, I don't recommend stirring caramel. I've got, okay. I've got them. I just have, I, I don't know. There's so many, I don't know where they're from anymore. <laughs> you know, who cares? Ugh. Okay, mixer, mixing time. It's already smelling pretty good, but it's dripping out of the bottom of my oven. Let me grab out. the rest of the ingredients. All right. Here, can I help? No, we're yeah. good. All we right. got it. We got it. I'll, I'll do this. I'll lift up the head of the stand mixer. All right. Helping. Uh, I'll hold this. Oh, do you want to hold it the whole time? No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so we have one stick uh, or half a cup of room temperature butter. That's really, really important because it'll help it whip up super light and fluffy. And we got a, what is this, a cup? A half a cup? How much I don't sugar? know. Uh, a cup of sugar. That looked like 200 a... 200 grams. What was that? <laughs> 
it's, it, was, it was some amount of sugar. You're gonna add. Some, you, you don't have to be precise with baking. That's one thing. No, I've not at all. You don't have to. You don't, don't have to follow directions. No, don't listen. Must follow. Must follow directions. No, you directions. have to follow directions. You must follow directions. I'm being parodical. All right, we got our baking powder, our baking soda, salt. Yes. I like to add baking powder, baking soda right in the creaming stage, and we're putting our. That's boiling pretty hard. Do you want that? That's okay. Okay. Cool. She's okay. All right. And I like to put the zest in at this time now, so it mixes really evenly. All right. And then we're going to put our eggs in in a moment. Vanilla. Whoa. Very vigorous. So vigorous. That's so a vigorous much, boil. So much vigor. Yeah. <laughs> that boil has vigor to it. Uh, That's it, right? That's all your stuff? Can I? Take these. Thank yeah. you. Of course. Thank you for your assistance. Anytime. Okay. All right. Yeah. So here we've got butter, sugar. Um, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and orange zest. So I, I really wanted to highlight that orange flavor in the blue moon. Blue moon. So zest is really where all the flavor is. Yeah, it's where all the oils reside. And yeah. Especially because you zested it, it's punctured all the cellular yeah. walls and it's got all the oils coming out. Yeah, yeah so it makes, a, it makes a big difference at throwing zest into something. And we're going to cream this. So super, super important. Whenever you're baking, everything needs to be room temperature. For, yeah. for a cake or a cookie, Unless the recipe specifies cold, some recipes do, room temperature. So my blue moon is at room temperature, my eggs are at room temperature, the butter is at room temperature. I had a chef who was nuts and he would even temp his flour. Wow. If the Because sometimes when you're working in a pastry kitchen, you're There's starting at like 4 a.m. Yeah. and it's freezing cold. Yeah. So he would warm up his flour in a circulator. That's very charming actually, I kind of like that. He, he, he's, he's really fancy, his stuff is pretty, Pretty spectacular. And the reason, as far as I understand, that you want to do that is so that your uh, batter doesn't split. If you if you have yes. cold ingredients, it split. Yeah, we're basically making an emulsion. Yeah. So um, this is like mostly fat, and eggs are mostly water. So if the butter is cold or the eggs are cold, it's just not going to come together. Yeah. It's just like making a mayonnaise or hollandaise or whatever. So now, if your cake does split, and when cake batter splits, it kind of looks like there's little. Um, Oh, you can tell. Yeah, it, it, it looks curdled. It looks like there's little cheese bits. It looks yeah. awful. Uh, does it help? I, I read that you, if you add a tablespoon of flour at a time, it can kind of bring it back yeah, together yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I can. But I, I mean, just, just don't. Yeah, just don't do it. Just, just follow the recipe. <laughs> don't, don't, have, don't get to that point. Don't. You don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. So, other really important thing, this is, this kind of okay, seems like a drag, but you got to stop your mixer, scrape the paddle. Scrape the bowl, and we're going to do this a few That's times, right. and you're going to think I'm nuts, but it's really, really important. Even if you have one of those paddles that have a scraper built in, it's important to stop and scrape because sometimes what happens is it'll be like super nice and fluffy action here, and then there's a little bit of unwhipped butter, and then that'll create little tunnels and holes in your cake. Um, and then also when you're doing like something small like a muffin, It'll actually explode right out of the muffin tin. They're called butter bombs, and it's very sad. That is sad. Butter bombs? Butter bombs. That you don't, sounds you don't nice, want a butter but bomb. That is a sad thing. It is very this sad because you've glove. worked so hard. What are you looking for? The other oven glove. This oh. guy is already like deep brown because he's on the top top rack here. Do you want a dry towel with a little bit of butter on it? No, I'm one handed. One here handed! Boom. Whoa. The power. Oh, stinking towel. All right. So it's really important to take your time to cream your butter. It's going to get really, really light and fluffy, and that's going to add a lot of volume to our cake. And it takes a minute. And if you're doing this by hand, just you know, just keep at it. You can do it. I've done it by hand. You can do it. Keep you can at do it. it. It just yeah. takes a little bit of time. Switch into some workout gear. Yeah. Put on some good music. And yeah. I mean, it sounds it sounds like a good way to spend an afternoon. Just be like, you know, I don't yeah. have a stand mixer, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna work out my my, yeah. my frustration on this yeah. cake. Yeah, cakes better. existed before mixers. That's true. That's true. Cakes existed before mixers. Yeah, you don't okay. need all this fancy schmancy stuff. It's just you know, it's nice. Like um. That was so scary. We just did that. It's all this <laughs> ripping hot sugar go everywhere. I was like, oh boy. Caramel is not the best thing to do live, huh? So much potential for danger. Yeah, I mean, what if uh, anything happens? I don't know. Well, you're really creaming this together, huh? We're really creaming this. This is going to take five minutes. And we're sorry if we, if you guys can't hear us. Uh, we'll be back soon. This is a necessary part. Oh, yeah, we could take we could take questions, but uh, I don't know if they can hear us. Okay, you, you think they can? you can hear us? Okay, let's take let's take a couple questions while we're creaming. With the romantic hum of the mixer. Yes. Oh. 
Alright. Alright. What's a good way to use corn to savory food? Ooh. I mean, other than duck al orange. Any kind of meat glaze. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Um, I really like it in vinaigrette. That's really nice, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of um, orange and a savory dish. That is a little tricky, though. I feel like anything really fatty, Yeah. it's a good compliment to. You know what it'd be really good with is like a, sh a braised short rib with like a like star anise five spice. Yeah, that sounds really so, like, good. Some orange rinds in there I think would be really nice. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think citrus works really well with savory just to like balance out stuff that might be really rich, like orange glazed chicken wings. Ooh. That sounds good, right? Yeah. Maybe next time. Maybe, could you just do it anywhere you use a lemon? Probably not. I, I mean, why not? It's not as acidic as a lemon. I mean, that's basically what they did with Blue Moon, right? Don't these Belgian white wheats typically have um, lemon in it? Well, technically, this is American style Belgian. Amer I'm sorry, American <laughs> style Legal Belgian. Legal requires me to say this. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I, th I think that that's what they do. And, um, uh, that's that's very interesting. Though. I'm gonna have to think about that. More savory applications for orange. What else? What else we got over there? Uh, what else you got? Let's see. Who's our biggest super chat to date? Our biggest super chat, like most days. Is it In and Out? In and Out. In and Out's back, what, baby. What do you mean? And I bet you know what he wants. Too. He wants me to make that one thing that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. The burger from Eddie Murphy's Row. That's it. The, the, Why don't the, you give him what he wants? Give the man what he wants. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Basically, Eddie, Eddie Murphy's mom, if you've ever seen Raw, makes like a meatloaf kind of burger. That sounds kind of gross, but you know, the man has probably given thousands of dollars at this point too, oh. so I But I now mean, you can never do it because you just want him to keep well, super chatting. Yes, you can do it as a live stream. So maybe maybe just for him. When's yeah. his birthday? Find out when his birthday is. In and out, when's your birthday? He's still here, help, help Okay, I'm feeling... Like looks, we are, we have cream. That looks cream, yeah. She looks cream to me, but you know, I you gotta you gotta stop. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. My pastry recipes are very long because I keep saying stop the mixer, scrape the paddle, scrape the bowl over and over and over again. Are you doing it again? Yeah, you got you got it. You oh got it. God. This is the key to making a good even crumb on your cake. This is the difference between an okay cake and like the best cake you've ever had. Really? Just stop the mixer, scrape the paddle, scrape the bowl. I mean, I heard you saying this yesterday when we were sh shooting an a, episode. An episode of, coming an episode soon. that is coming soon. I'm going to turn this turkey around because it's browning way too fast. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to start adding my eggs. We want to do it one at a time because, like we mentioned earlier, this is an emulsion. So if we add too much water to our fat, it's going to break. And we need to make sure our emulsion stays nice and creamy and stable. And that's how you get a beautiful crumb on your cake. So this is going to go. And you, you know what I'm going to do once we stop? Scrape down the bowl and do it again. The paddle. The pa scrape, scrape down the paddle, the paddle and the bowl. And the bowl. And, and then, then next do it again. Day. Yeah. So we're gonna go until this looks very well incorporated. People always, always undermix this stuff. I don't know why. I mean, there's I'm, a fear of overmixing, but undermixing is. You really, you really don't have to worry about that once you've added the flour, because you don't want to build up too yeah, much gluten. Yeah. But at this point, you cannot overmix, right? Well, I mean, you could. You if can. You, if you let it go overnight, for example, that might be a little too much. Well, I think I overemphasized this once with one of my line cooks, and he took it so far that the butter melted and it just turned into soup and it was splashing out of the bowl. Oh no, he was like, but you said to just mix until the, as long as the day is. So what? I let that whip until the egg was really evenly incorporated and it looked totally emulsified. And now I'm, I stop it, I'm stopping the mixer. I'm scraping the paddle. That caramel's already start. I, I can smell it from Is she here. caramel yet? Oh, Ooh. do you ever put your face in something that's so hot that your eyes fog up? All the time. It's, it's like I was wearing glasses, but they were my eyeballs. <laughs> I, I went over this and I couldn't see for a second, <laughs> so that was absolutely terrifying. It smells good though. Smelling, mm. smelling citrusy. Orangey, caramelly. Those are the things that we put in there. Oops. And beery. One egg. Okay, next egg. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Oh, maddening! No wonder it's so hard to make a good cake. You just, it's about patience. Yeah, damn. Everything's got to get to know each other, and we're just gonna let her whip. Right. You know. We're almost there. She's she's looking good. Yeah, see, it me? looks a little broken still. You gotta let it go until yeah. it's like fully homogenized. And I feel like the sound changes. When you put the egg in right away, it's gonna sound a little Sloppy. wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can hear it's like more quiet it and creamy up, yeah. as as you know Let's that the egg is there. getting. Still sounds sloppy. See how that's like transformed? Yeah, no, it's I'll become so I'll show you guys smooth. on the next egg. Yeah. 
but beautiful, but see see how uh, this is creamy and light, and this is not. This oh, is why we why must gotta we gotta stop yeah. and you gotta scrape, or you get these big holes in your cake that look really sad. You're answering so many questions for me that I forgot had forgotten that I had. It was like, why does my cake have holes in it? Now we know. Why isn't my crumb nice and tender? Now we know. Wow. Emulsion. Everything emulsion. is an. He, most foods are an emulsion. I feel like savory cooking and pastry. That's an interesting Understanding philosophical exercise. There's going to be like a whole emulsion chapter in the book. Whoa. <laughs> I can't wait for this book. It's going to be so exciting. Who wants to read 15 pages on emulsions? I do. Do you? Yeah. Well, it's going to be available. Okay, last day. You're not going to give me a copy? That's yeah. okay. I'll buy it. No, no yeah. I've got to help the numbers. <laughs> Dropping the vanilla in now, okay. and then we whip again. We whip. We whip. We whip. We whip. More time. One more time. And I think our caramel, let's check her out while this does its thing. Caramel's looking pretty caramel -y, but still pretty light. Yeah, well, let's take it. I'm going to crank this just a touch because I want this to be ready when our batter is ready. In the, in the hot pan, hot and it pan. smells really good. And I have not been fussing with it at all. And there's no crystallization. It's like perfect. See, you know, we should, can we stop for a second? Yeah. Because it looks it totally broken. broken. Yeah. See that? It looks like. Curdled eggs. It looks like curdled eggs. And that's. You got, you got, a, you got an angle on that? Oh, no. yeah. Well, <laughs> I can't move cameras. it because of, of uh, focus, but uh, that's what it looks like when it's broken. It looks like ch cheese, like you're making cheese yeah. almost, like cheese curds. So you're just going to beat that until just it gets really going, and then we're going <laughs> to... Excellent. It's live, guys. <laughs> Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything is possible. Okay. <laughs> so that's... That was the uh, midstream fire alarm test. Everything's working just Everything's fine. Everything's working, yeah. It's great. It, it just shuts off. It's okay. Um, well, uh, we're supposed to do that after this, right? Yeah. Oh. All right. Let's get the cake assembled, and then we'll take another beer break. Look at how smooth she is. She's very smooth. If you if you let your batter look all curdled, it looks curdled after you bake it. Yeah, you can exactly. like see it in yeah, the crumb. Yeah. But, um, the crumb is all inconsistent. It's like it's got like thick parts and thin parts, and now it's all nice and creamy. It's no, gosh, that's fun. Okay. So, baby, I need that step stool. Uh-oh. Sorry, folks. I'm sure that that's very loud. I hope you had headphones in on Mac. Yeah, take out your headphones. <laughs> and my caramel is done. Perfect timing. I'm going to just continue over here. So, this is exactly the color I want. It's like a nice, uh, amber, you know, the color of the, the cane in Jurassic Park. So I'm going to add the butter now and it's going to stop the cooking and make sure that our caramel doesn't get too burnt. And it's also going to make it really nice and tender. If you don't add butter and you get more of like a chewy caramel, which you don't want for this and some kosher salt. I killed it. It's dead now. Don't you've do this at home. You've defeated the... Uh, oh, sorry. Mic's off. I didn't want to go get too close to it. Makes well, sense. I killed it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't do this at home. Do not unplug your, your smoke detector. But for, for, for television, I'm going to unplug it for the moment. And then I'm going to plug it right back in once we're done. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. So I'm just stirring in the butter until it's totally melted. And then we're going to pour this on top of our orange. And then finish off our batter, which that, that looks fun. good. And... Here we go. Nicely emulsified. So if you're using salt, I like to use, I always like to use diamond crystal kosher salt. Big time. Because Morton's actually has this, um, it's got a anti-caking agent, which yeah. can make your sugar crystallize. It's also the iodine levels are off or something, right? Yeah. So um, if you do only have Morton's, like add it at the absolute, absolute end, or your sugar is going to crystallize, even with the help of the blue moon. Nothing can save you with that salt. So I like to kind of spread these rinds around. Will you just evenly distribute this yeah, for me and I'll course. finish off the batter? More than happy to. Okay, so now we're gonna add our flour and our beer in three additions. So once again, you're doing this because this is an emulsion and we don't wanna overwhelm it with too much liquid. So that's why we're gonna do a third of the flour, a third of the beer, and keep going until it's all, it's all, it's all in there. Whew. 
Oh boy. So the comments I better not talking much about the fire one. I'm betting that nobody's nobody's really nobody noticed. No one that, no right? one even noticed nobody that, right? Nobody noticed. Yeah. Great. Nobody noticed that. Great. That's live TV, folks. Yeah. Okay, so I added the flour baseball. until it was just absorbed. Now I'm gonna do a third of my beer. Mix it until it's just absorbed. So once you got your flour in there, now we're gonna make sure that we don't overmix because that's when the gluten development can happen. More flour. How's this look? Fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm not even Perfect. done. Perfect. Just wait till I'm done. The masterpiece. Truly your best work. Wow. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get this sort of here. Uh, the last of our flowers going in. Whoops. Got a little messy, but you know what happens. How many stages did you add in? I wasn't paying attention. I did it in three. Yeah. Three stages. Three stages. And now you're adding some blue moon. And now I'm adding some, the last bit of blue moon. So I like to go until the flower's almost absorbed. And then we go into our wet. And then when it's like almost mostly mixed, I'm going to take it off and I'll finish it by hand. Because there's still some, some batter at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So ex Can I help you? may I hand you these things? Absolutely. Thank you. Always happy to see you, Chef. <laughs> Anytime. All right. So we're, we're stopping the mixer and we're scraping the paddle. This, this, this makes sense thematically with the, what, what we've been doing today. It's not repetitive at all, sir. Do I get to lick it? Is that if, you, if you'd like. <laughs> Don't do this at home. It's, it's on your beard. <laughs> it's in my beard. That's two reasons. That, oh, that's really good. Just a, mm. a few folds right at the end just to make sure that we're totally evenly homogenized, mixed, pouring it right over the batter, and then it's going to go into the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. And uh, there we go. That batter tastes like cream skull. Vanilla. Vanilla. And orange. And orange, which is cream skull. <laughs> so we did I did it. the math on that, and I, I added up. It, it really added up. Yeah. I think so. No, absolutely. OK, cool. Um, Smooth it out a little. You don't really have to worry about it. It'll, it'll take care of itself in the oven. It's a nice loose batter. I don't worry about it too much unless it's something really thick like a pound cake. I'm going to pop this. Ooh, that got hot. That's hot. It's hot. She's hot. Careful. It's, we're really cooking here. Things are hot. So you're going in the bottom of it. I'm right? going in the bottom. 350? Yep. Here we go. Thank you. All yours. Ooh, okay. okay. Could someone set a timer for Cakes me? Cakes in the oven. Time for a beer break. I think we've earned it. Yeah, I think we did too. I'm get this we out made of here. it. We survived. <laughs> Barely, by the skin of our teeth. <laughs> Whew. Uh, oh, my minutes? God, what have I done? Thirty-five. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Cool. I, we really did earn this, this beer that's, break. That's live TV, folks. <laughs> this is what it's like before we edit the show. This is exactly what it's like. I have no idea what you're talking about. I I've never seen any um, mistakes. So, uh, the cake was inspired by the Valencia orange flavor yep. in, uh, in Blue Moon, giving it a bright flavor like Blue Moon. It was a very, very bright flavor when I, when I, when yeah. I tasted it. From it was that like, zest. Yeah, the, yeah. It's all in the zest. That's all in the, the zest, cake. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, 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 it's because Blue Moon's kind of sweet. So, the Valencia bit, orange, yeah. the acidity of the orange helps, yeah. you know, sort of balance that out. Yeah, it gives yeah. Gives you a nice balancing act. So, I think it's going to go really well with the cake, and it, it's also like in the cake. It, I feel like it does a lot for the cake. I feel like it, yes. I, I've never had a beer cake before. I've never had beer and cake before. And it's in both the cake and the caramel. Yeah. I'm yeah. so interested to, see, to try this, even though I've tried it several times again. But we're, it's TV, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried this once in my life. No, never. Um, you haven't seen it. You weren't there for the conception. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to remind everybody, all the Super Chats are being donated to Action Against Hunger. Blue Moon is matching up to $10,000. Mm -hmm. So be sure to super chat. We're gonna have a better chance to see it. Why don't we answer a couple questions? We're already at seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred. Oh, seventeen hundred dollars. And repeat everything I say. No one can hear. <laughs> I'm repeating. I'm repeating what uh, Sawyer is saying. Uh, we're already at seventeen hundred dollars. And again, Blue Moon is matching up to ten thousand dollars. Let's max them out. Let's the, the Lady <laughs> and the Tramp thing. That's not gonna get the, the the clicks. What's what's something that we'll do if we hit ten thousand mm. dollars? Um, mm. I will shave my head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's old fashioned yeah, comedy. Yeah. Thanksgiving tattoo? Thanksgiving tattoo? <laughs> right Volunt now? Don't volunteer me for that. What am I going to get? A turkey? Request. Okay, okay yeah, oh, right. Oh boy, this okay, is going to get weird. We, uh, no, no, no. no. Then we can't, we can't we can say no. Request. All right. Um, just keep answering questions. 
Yeah, let's just keep answering questions. Cool. Okay. Right. If, you, if you want to get a, a question answered by us, Super Chat right now. The Super Chats are going to Action Against Hunger. Yeah. Super Chat. It's a great right. cause. I'll just roll through some real quick. Um, as you remember from past chats, I always prioritize the questions I like the most. Yes. So oh, this is a bills, bills oriented question. Oh, well, first off, Jordan Anderson, 10 bucks from Philly. Sawyer is a cool dude. Remember yeah, he meeting is. him at your Philly book tour. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan from Philly says. You have to repeat that. Question. What was Jordan what? Uh, Jordan Anderson. Jordan Anderson met Sawyer in Philly. He's a cool dude. Sawyer wanted me to repeat that, so you all heard it. But is there a question <laughs> at the end of it? Sawyer is a cool dude? There was no question there. <laughs> um, okay, but then another question uh, aligned with my interest. I'm trying to find his name. Donated from Rochester. What would be you got a Rochester your native. ideal Thanksgiving garbage plate? Ooh. Ideal Thanksgiving garbage plate. I mean, Thanksgiving already is a garbage plate. It's stuffing with meat on top, gravy, mm -hmm. like instead of the uh, the hot onion meat sauce. Just stick some fries under there. Just put some fries in there and you got yeah. a garbage plate pretty much. Yeah. I, I, I really think that a Thanksgiving plate already is a garbage plate because you're already mixing it up and, and stabbing at it like Tony Soprano, just like... And it, it's, uh, yeah, yeah it, it's a, I'm sorry to, for a disappointing answer, but that is a garbage plate. Ryan Schiff, that was. Ryan Schiff. Thank you for the question, Ryan Schiff. Um, Let's do one more. Maria Casey, any good recipes for vegetarians on Thanksgiving? Maria Casey asks, are there any good recipes for, for, uh, for vegetarians on Thanksgiving? What do you think? I mean, we're making a couple vegetarian recipes today. Yeah, but like you want something like center PC to, yeah. to, to rival the turkey. So, I mean, stuff something. That's always cool and dramatic. Stuff a turkey. Stuff a, um, uh, a, I mean, um, stuff a, yeah, stuff turkey. a pumpkin. Just, stuff a pumpkin. I was going to say a squash. Yeah, like squash, a whole yeah. butternut squash or a yeah. whole acorn squash or pumpkin. That'd be huge. Yeah. Do the legal disclaimer, drink responsibly when you're doing it. And also drink responsibly. Whether yep. you're ve vegetarian or not, drink responsibly uh, this Thanksgiving and all days. It's a, uh, a good thing to do. Yeah. All right, so uh, I think, yeah, a stuffed pumpkin would rock. It's yeah, very seasonal. Really dramatic, yeah. and you can get nice big wedges of it. And you can um, stuff it with meat. There's a great recipe on Siri Feeds for stuffed turkey, or Ooh. stuffed pumpkin. Why do I keep saying turkey? I don't know. It's a stuffed pumpkin, and um, the in the recipe, he actually glazes the outside with miso. So the skin is really delicious and crackly, too. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's miso. a great recipe. Check it out. Hmm. That sounds really good. Yeah. Well, check it out. You got a you got a glazed stuffed pumpkin mm -hmm. with miso. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. One more, maybe. You got anything else? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry to th throw a curveball at you. Okay, uh, Nick B. What's your Nick most B. watch your must watch Thanksgiving movie or Thanksgiving activity? I mean, I'm all about. Uh, so, sorry, 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 sorry. Nick B. asks, uh, what is your most watched Thanksgiving movie or Thanksgiving activity? Uh, every year, I watch the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Movie personally, I've never it, seen it. It's not. It's I, I can't fully recommend it, but yeah, I grew up watching it. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving activity: napping, probably just taking a good long sleep after having cooked for six hours and just being drenched in sweat. Yeah, you? my Thanksgiving activity is cooking, fighting with the family, usually storming off and not even eating the dinner. Uh, what am I going to do this year? <laughs> yeah, this year, you're just, just going to fight ham? No, I that. would never. Yeah, so you get to eat the food this year. I'm going to eat the food this year, wild. It's all about breaking with tradition this year. It trying is, new yeah. Things. We're trying new things with this Southwestern-themed yep, Thanksgiving yeah. menu. Now we're doing the Next sides. Next of which is the sides. Yeah. So I'm going to make my broccoli, cheese, queso, uh, extravaganza. Pie. Extravaganza. Yeah. Um, so, oh. Actually, next they want. Oh no, no, no we, we we can do whichever one we want. Okay, um, so I'll start with the broccoli yeah, casserole. Yeah, sounds good. Let me get this pot. Can I get the, the knees for the broccoli casserole? Hot pot. Hot pot. Hot, hot, hot pot, pot coming pot. through. That's not my beer. That one is. Hot pot coming through. Thank you very much. Kendall, Kendall. is working hard off camera, making sure that we can keep rolling here. Thank you very much. I have to look at my recipe because. <laughs> Because uh, this is Solo's recipe and I cannot afford to screw it up. Um, okay, pour it <laughs> milk and cornstarch to make a slurry and saucepan. Okay. So saucepan. Th saucepan, sorry. Saucepan. So this is a basically hybrid, um, not elote, that's her thing. Uh, this is a hybrid broccoli casserole mm -hmm. meets queso meets Frito pie. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to make. First thing we have to do is make a cheese sauce, a queso. Uh, so I'm going to head over to the stovetop to Swaps. do that. I need, whoop, I need my pot. Got myself a nice saucier here. This is going to be your best option for making something like this. I like a nice rounded saucepan. 
Yeah, uh, your whisk can get in there. Yeah, because whenever you're making a roux, if you end up, you know, if you got really squared off sides to your pot, a lot of roux can get stuck in there and you're gonna end up with a lumpy sauce. Yeah. So, but the first thing I'm doing, I'm not really making a roux, I'm making like a foot, I'm not even using a roux. I'm not no making roux. a roux. No, yeah, this is thinking Never mind. the cornstarch. <laughs> this is, still, but this is, this also, is still the move. This is always the move, I feel yeah. like, for any kind of sauce, because stuff can like get in there and burn. So, uh, what do I start with, a little olive oil? I also do not remember the recipe. Oh, butter, it's all about butter. I made butter. this like last year. Here we go, I need four tablespoons of unsalted. She's got you. Is that you ready nothing. to go? Okay, here we go. It's divided. It's pre-divided. Excellent. So, I'm going to melt this, get this foaming, and then I'm going to saute some onion. And then I'm going to add some spices and some crushed garlic. Thank you so much. And then I'm going to make a slurry here. What I got here is how much cornstarch? I have some amount of cornstarch. I have a tablespoon of cornstarch. And I'm going to make a slurry with this beforehand. If you want to thicken any sauce, you just have to mix it with a cold liquid before adding it to your pot. If you mix it with a hot liquid, you're gonna get lumps. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. So lumpy queso is gross. Lumpy queso is the worst thing to ever happen to This anyone. is the perfect spot for your tiny whisk. Yes, it is. I have Several. lots of them back here. That's a, a horrible secret about my channel is there's not just one tiny whisk. They all think it's one. There's many. I think it's he has, funny. He has stunt doubles. This is the one true tiny whisk. There he is. It's like your closet. You just have blue shirts and black aprons. Exactly, I'm like Superman. Tiny I'm like whisks. a really boring Superman. <laughs> just, yeah, just blue blue shirts and tiny whisks. Uh, so I'm making a slurry out of the one tablespoon of cornstarch with some of the two cups of milk that are going to this recipe. And this is going to thicken up the whole mixture. Mm -hmm. And now over there, I got my butter a bubbling. There we go. That's going. And now I'm going to add. This is probably about a half a large onion. Nice Could I butter dice. up your dish for you? Would you? Yeah. Oh, you love smearing butter. I love yeah. smearing butter. I wouldn't I rob you of, that, of, that, of yeah. that joy. Schmear. 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 Yeah, she goes smear the butter. You want to smear it. Like a pap schmear. In the office, Steve Carell's <laughs> character thinks that it's called pap schmear. Oh, he calls this pap schmear? Pap schmear. Okay. It's a good line. I, think. I was very upset for a second. <laughs> uh, all right, so what is this over here? Kendall, what is this? Oh, a it's, little pickle brine. Oh, it's pickle brine. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Cool. And what is the, that's the garlic. Okay. Oh, I'm not used to having everything all like pre-prepped and everything. I want to try to do it on camera. So Kendall helps me out a lot, but she usually doesn't chop my garlic for me. This rocks. Uh, so I'm going to saute this until it's nice and soft. Um, probably about, I'm guessing, three to five minutes. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, three minutes. Okay. So just want to get the onions tender. I want them to turn translucent around the edges. Uh, I want them to, you know, become tender. And um, then I'm going to add my spices, my garlic, and I'm just going to let those cook for just a little bit because garlic burns very quickly, spices burn very quickly. So we just mm -hmm. want to toast them a little bit, just get some heat in there. Just wake them up. Wake them up. Wake them exactly. up inside. I'm going to go rinse. Let's, let's switch beers. Yes, you go rinse. I'll keep the people entertained. Hello. My name is Andrew Ray, but you might know me as Bitchy with that. Uh, so, <laughs> so just sauteing up this onion. This is a very... Um, very, very easy queso. A lot of quesos require that you make a roux, which is a paste of flour and butter that is very easy to overcook, undercook. It's very easy to accidentally add too much liquid. You end up with a lumpy sauce. This uses the cornstarch slurry, which is basically just like a cheat code for an easy, smooth sauce. So the melted cheese and the queso and another cheat ingredient, this is Velveeta, which honestly I think is at the root of every great queso. Uh, Velveeta and a can of Rotel chilies, you know, mixed chilies. That is perfect queso as it is, but this one's going to be a, a, a much better because it has spices and, and everything nice. We're just stepping it up a little bit, but the inspiration is Rotel and Velveeta. Exactly. Because that's a, that's a great queso. But what's great about this is that it's full of stabilizers yes. that are going to help you, yes. you know, keep, keep your sauce from breaking. If you don't live in a country with American cheese, you can use a little sodium citrate, which might be easier to find if you're like in Europe or something. Just add a half a teaspoon to this mixture, whisk it up, and uh, it'll turn any cheese into American cheese. Yeah, no, I, that's one of my favorite. Again, I learned it from Kenji. Just making any kind of cheese melt yeah. like American, you yeah. have sodium citrate. Yeah, it's really a great cool thing stuff. to have. So just start saying these guys for probably not, I don't know, another two minutes. I really want to, no color on here. We're not turning yeah. these brown or nothing like that. The heat's too low, I got a medium heat. Just want to cook them out, get them soft, get them fragrant. Then we're adding the spices, we're adding everything else. And 
it's just gonna come together into a really easy cheese sauce. Yeah. Kendall, would you mind microwaving my my um, uh, broccoli for me? Kendall, off screen, is going to par cook my broccoli. She's just got some frozen broccoli florets, uh, the small ones that you know already kind of bite sized. Yeah. And she's just gonna nuke them for two minutes, steam them, get them, Super easy. you know, get get them pre-cooked, and then we're just gonna mix all this together, top it with Fritos, throw it in the oven. Boom, boom, boom. Bingo, Quick bango. Easy. Bingo, bango, done. Frito casserole. Frito casserole. Mm -hmm. I love Fritos on top of stuff like this too because I feel like they stay crunchy in a way regular tortilla chips don't. Yes, absolutely. Crunch for days. Yeah, because they're so thick. Yeah, yeah. And also who knows what else is in them. God knows. I, I have the weirdest, I'm happy not knowing. I have the weirdest inclination. When I start tossing the onions, I stand up on my tippy toes. Have you seen this? You I don't know, know why. Whatever makes you, you toss better, it's, it's I guess. It's just part yeah. of me right now. It's just yeah. part of who I am. Yeah. Uh, so this is your queso recipe. Uh huh. And you were borrowing inspiration from that Velveeta and mm -hmm. Rotel chilies kind of. Yeah. And instead of Rotel chilies, we've got some pickled uh, jalapenos. Yep, yep. And we got a little bit of the brine. Yeah. We're going to add jalapenos. the brine really like at the end, right off at the, heat. Right Otherwise, the whole thing will just curdle. It'll just curl up. Yeah. That's really good to know because this is very acidic. Yep. And that's what like makes it curdle up. Yeah, but it, it perks the whole thing up, I feel. I mean, I love a good perk. It definitely has a great amount of heat to it, just the right amount of heat, where you just like you, you eat it and you're like, that's not spicy. Yeah, that's good. Spicy, <laughs> yeah, just, like as, after yeah, you just, walk away, you're like, oh, yeah. there was a jalapeno in there. It's a way, it's a way homer. It's on the way home, you realize it was spicy. Is that a baseball thing? No, a way homer is like a joke that you get on the way home. Oh, okay, I like that. But with jalapenos. But with jalapenos, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm probably, I'm just gonna give this a little bit longer. Maybe I had it on, on too low heat, but it just doesn't look. I want, the, I want the edges of the onion to be translucent, which is starting to get there. You mm -hmm. almost want the onions to, uh, to look like little ice cubes, kind of. Like. Yeah, so that when you bite into it, it's nice and tender. Yes, because yeah. you don't want crunchy queso, really, except for the crunchy topping. I mean, maybe you do, I don't know. Maybe you do. do I'm you, not going to tell you, you how to live your life. Yeah, no, yeah. Just, yeah. If you want crunchy queso? Do whatever you want to the onions, really. Thing. Yeah. As long as you mix your cornstarch separately, everything will be fine. Just eat a whole onion like an apple. That's the same thing, really, effectively. I mean, that's what I do on the weekends. It's a great way to make friends. It's a great way to make friends mm -hmm. and get your whatever vitamins are in onions. I don't know. Uh, so next up, we're adding our spices. Mm -hmm. And the garlic. And the garlic, yes. So Everybody's going in the same We got a little bit of pattern. cayenne. I think so. I think that's cayenne. This is yes, your it recipe. Yes, it is. It's cayenne and cumin. All right, so that looks like about a half teaspoon of cayenne, but you can adjust that how you like if you want it more or less spicy. We got uh, a teaspoon of cumin. Mm -hmm. And we got, it's probably two cloves worth of chopped garlic, if I had to guess. Three. Three cloves worth Very of chopped close, garlic. Though. Well, I'm learning. So we're just gonna saute that together for a little bit. Let those flavors get to know each other, wake up a little bit. There we go. How long do you think I should let that go for, like a minute? I think it's good. Okay. Oh, you think it's good now? Yeah. All right, let's yeah. rock. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm just adding the milk. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, milk. Yes, now we're gonna like and make salt. a... Or salt goes last. Salt can go in now. Okay. Let's do I don't some remember salt. when I said to do it, but probably, probably helped to a, get it evenly distributed. This is a flex. We're not baking here, you know. Yeah. No, this We're is where baking. you can actually have some fun and be flexible with your yeah. directions. So like, the the one thing that you got to do, you can't be flexible about, is add doing things like adding the cornstarch to cold liquid. Like that's the only way you can do it. Otherwise, yeah. you're gonna end up with clumps. So I mean, also, once you get the cheese in there. Vigorous stirring. Vigorous stirring. Vigorous. For that, I'm going to need not a tiny whisk, unfortunately. I'm going to need a regular, a regular sizer. Because full size, tiny yeah. whisk, he's great for a lot of things, but this is not one of this his is fire not, applications. This is not where you need to, yeah. And I'm starting with the Velveeta. So you want to want to let that come to a simmer, yeah. I believe. Yes. And then we're going to add our cornstarch, and you want to let it boil for a full minute. Cornstarch needs a full minute to make sure that it's totally hydrated. And yeah. then we're going to add our Velveeta. You can add the Velveeta all at once, whisk, whisk, whisk until it's melted, and then this second cheese must be one handful at a time. Very delicate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And off heat or on no, the very low heat? No, we're going to stay heats? on low heat, Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this has so much stabilizers, there's no way it's going to break unless... No, that's not going to break, but... The, yeah. So letting that melt into the mixture uh, along with the cornstarch is going to make it really nice and stable so that once we add this, we're going to get more of like a stretch situation. I love a stretch situation. Yeah. It's, it's my favorite kind of situation. In fact, yeah, mid mid midstream stretch. With a beer. With a beer. <laughs> this is how I like to yoga. This is how I like to bloom it. 
Oh, I worked out last night and that did bad things to me just now. Oh, I, I, we did this video and that guy got me in places I have not been gotten. Like here, like back here. How did he do that? Anyway. <laughs> 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 okay, so getting this up to a summer and then I'm gonna add the cornstarch slurry. This mm -hmm. is not that much cornstarch, by the way. This is getting most of the thickness from the cheese. This is just help bringing it together. It's just help bringing it together, yeah. Because uh, yeah. if you wanted to make like, you know, just a straight up sauce out of just this, this wouldn't be enough. You'd probably need three, two, three tablespoons. What is it, like a tablespoon per cup of liquid or something like that? I do not know. Well, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> you came here for answers? Sorry. We don't have them. <laughs> we don't have them. All we have is some queso, or we're about to have some queso, and then we're gonna make it into a, a lovely broccoli casserole. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take this opportunity while this is coming up to a simmer to remind everybody that all your Super Chats are being donated to Action Against Hunger. Amazing organization, they feed millions of hungry people a year, and Blue Moon's matching up to $10,000 of those donations. So please Super Chat. Well, let's take a question right now while I'm waiting for this to come up. Okay. You got one handy? Yeah. So, sorry to blindside you. Uh, Instead of a question, how about a comment? Because we asked about um, what we do at 10,000. Yeah. We're at 2,600 right now. Wow, it's a big jump. Uh, Nicholas Salter said at 10,000, goal should be to make your favorite dish using your least favorite ingredient, a pig's blood. And then I saw pig's blood cheesecake, pig's blood quesadillas, a lot of cool ideas. We don't have to do it tonight, right? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, okay, so you know what? That sounds like fun. That sounds fun, actually. Yeah, I'm into that. If you guys help us hit $10,000, we will make either, I don't know, we'll make an episode, some special episode. Or like episode. another live stream. Yeah, we'll do another live something. stream. Yeah. Making something out of the ingredient we hate most. So I'll be making a cilantro salad, and you'll be making what? What's your least favorite? Or do favorite? I make you something, and you make me something? But th then we'll like it, right? Or you, you're, you make something that you know I hate. Out of cilantro. You've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> I can You've do already it again. made a I Kit Kat out of cilantro. So now, okay, we're at a point here. Anyway, that's that's the challenge. Uh, if we hit 10,000 mm -hmm. in Super Chats, that not only will fun. Blue Moon match that full 10,000, also we will make a live stream or episode or something where we make the food that we hate the most. For each other or for ourselves. We'll Either figure, way, it's we'll going to be a lot of fun. We'll figure out the details. Or you so can tell us what you want the I'm details to be. I'm up to a rolling be. simmer here, and I'm just Perfect, going to yeah. whisk this constantly while slowly streaming in my cornstarch slurry. Because if you just dump it in one spot, it's going to thicken up immediately, and you're going to end up with a big gloopy mass in the middle of your milk, and nobody wants that. Nobody wants that, no. And then this needs to be cooked for one full minute. One full minute. To make sure that the cornstarch is absorbed and to just activate it a bit, I believe. Citrus and coriander. Citrus and coriander. Can you describe why those? Well, coriander already has citrusy notes to it, like naturally. So the citrus will only bring, like when you add citrus to coriander, I feel like it just highlights the natural aroma of the coriander. I should point out to the, those who are curious, I do hate cilantro. Coriander technically is cilantro, but if we're oh, talking yeah. about the spice, it is entirely different flavor. Totally different flavor, yeah. And I don't think the, the genetic marker that sets me off and makes me want to gag is even in the ground coriander seed. I don't think it's in there. Because I, I eat coriander all the time. It's a fantastic spice. You yeah. know, I'll, what? You're not allergic to color and vibrancy. So, you know, that's fine. As long as, as, long as you're getting color and vibrancy, then that's fine. What? I'm <laughs> saying <laughs> 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 that coriander and citrus create color and vibrancy. Coriander and citrus. ever be allergic to that. Yes, yeah. no, you can't be allergic to color and vibrancy unless you're allergic to the sun. People are. People you are. You wrote a yeah. play about it back yeah, in high yeah. school yeah. that I was in. So. Uh, you can't be allergic to color and vibrancy, both of which Blue Moon has. I assume that's what you're trying to get me to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so, um, uh, but okay, you know what? I have, an, I have a much easier, quicker challenge. If, do we have any uh, cilantro in the house? No. This is not a cilantro <laughs> household. Of course not. <laughs> Damn, I was going to say I would eat a head of cilantro if we... Uh, oh, uh, that's a good one. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. If we hit 10,000, I will eat a, tea, a tablespoon of coriander. I'll do the coriander powder challenge. I will. I'll eat, I'll eat a, a tablespoon of coriander powder. I don't think I'm going to do that. All right. So this Have has been you, definitely going for longer than a minute. That's going, yeah. So I'm going to drop in the Velveeta. The Velveeta can go in all, all the way down all to low heat once. right yeah. now. And yeah, the Velveeta can go in all the way at once because it's not... I would not describe this as a fragile cheese. It's the complete opposite of it's 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 American. It's hearty. It's it can hearty. take it all. Yeah. It can take the heat. Yeah, it's, I think it's indestructible. I even if you melt it, 
it will come back. If I was a cheese, I want to be Velveeta. Really? That's the cheese that you put? Indestructible cheese. I would be, um, I would be maybe, I, would be, I was going to say I'd be Yellow American. I love Yellow American. Oh, that's the same cheese. thing. It's the exact same thing. That's the so exact same thing. We both be processed Yellow American cheeses. But we would be indestructible. But we would be indestructible. Yeah. Do I want to be indestructible? I kind of want to destruct one day. Meh. <laughs> okay, so that's fully incorporated. It looks to me like. Now, this is, the, this is where people mess up the recipe. Just add it slowly. One handful at a time. At a time. Vigorous, stir vigorously. Get in those corners. Am I trying to like aerate it or something? Well, the stirring vigorously is gonna kind of like elongate the protein strands in this cheese, and that's how we get the nice stretch. Ah, okay. It's almost like we're uh, wait, building wait up gluten or something. Wait for the first one like to that. melt. Okay. And then we add the next. I, Grab, I, I, like I, I, just like when you make fondue. I don't think I see nothing. Okay, all right. I all can't right, tell okay, from here. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's almost like building up uh, gluten in a, in a, in a yeah, dough. Yeah, yeah, it's we're, exactly we're the same thing. Cheese kind of works that same way. Like if you get, if you keep whisking, it's gonna get nice and stretchy and it's smooth. Got proteins that you can elongate yep, and, yep. It'll, and it'll end up being very stretchy cheese. So, yeah. so once I'm done with this, when I lift up the whisk, there should be a nice Hopefully, long yeah. string yeah. of cheese. I think we can go even a little, little hotter. A little hotter? A little hotter. Okay. Just a little bit. You're the boss. It can take it, yeah. This is a, this is a sturdy queso. I don't know, folks. Is she, Will, Will Sola, Stump? queso, something? <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> but yeah, it's looking really nice and smooth. All right, I'm gonna, this looks like one handful to me, so Let's I'm gonna do it, yeah. add the rest here. If, you, if you're not vigorous, it can get a little grainy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, I have vigor. Yeah, we must have vigor, we must. I have so much vigor. So much vigor. And there's nothing I hate more than a grainy queso. That's the other thing, it's really disappointing when you end up with it's grainy queso. It's the worst, yeah. Like why, the whole point of queso is that it should be smooth and velvety and um, luscious. Do we have uh, any tortilla chips here? I'm guessing we don't. We have Fritos. We have Fritos. Yeah, so I'll just take a spoon and I'll just dip yeah. them in there and yeah. put some Fritos on top. It'll be just like chips and salsa, sort of. Or chips and queso, rather. Okay, I think it's all melted. What do you think? A, a little more vigor. Okay. A little more vigor. Here we go. So much vigor. <laughs> you playing games with me now? No, I'm not. <laughs> let, me give, let me give it a whisk. No. Let me take a look. No, this is my no? dish. All right, all right. Okay, let's see. Do you, do you feel you got like a stretch? No. Well, well we got some, we got, it's smooth. It's smooth. It's That's smooth. all I care about it's yeah. that, is that it's smooth. It's smooth. And now I'm going to take it off the heat. Yep. Because my arm is getting tired. I'm trying not to show it. <laughs> okay, do I, and you smeared, you already smeared my, already smeared. my, my pap. Yep. And that's off the heat, so now we can add the jalapenos. Now it is safe. There we go. If you, jalapeno you, If action. you're gonna like, um, if you're not gonna eat all of this right now, I would say just add the pickle juice to the portion you're gonna have, and then you can save the rest and reheat it. And this is some of the brine from the pickled jalapenos yep. here. We got probably what was like two teaspoons worth. Uh, oh, sorry, oh. let me grab that. And now we're just going to whisk that in. This turkey's and looking really good. And just like all things, we got to taste it, okay? After you've finished a dish, don't just go and serve it like I usually do. Taste it first. <laughs> taste it, make sure. I just made chicken parm Broccoli? for Jess two weeks ago. And I, we sat down and I was like, oh, I forgot salt. <laughs> we're like two deep, bites deep. And I'm like, this isn't very salty. I was like, oh, I didn't put salt or sauce. It was a, <laughs> it was a weird day, ladies and gentlemen. These two were in space. They were floating around. Yeah, that's what happens around. And I was home making chicken parm. Okay, so now, put that there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little taste though. I wanna make sure that I'm happy with it. Oh, I got spoons it. for you. Okay, wouldn't it be funny if I used the straw though? Oh gosh, no, no. You're gonna burn your throat. Careful, I'm gonna go in with the spoon. Did you get some? Nope. <laughs> it looks very smooth. I think you did a good job. Well, you brought all the spoons, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm. Hmm, yeah. It is quite smooth, isn't it? I will go for a little more salt. The, the texture's really good. Yeah, a little more salt, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the texture's great. That's a really great texture for you. And, and the keys are, I've just learned, vigorous agitation. Mm -hmm. And not to say that I was vigorously agitated. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, vigorous <laughs> agitation of the cheese mm -hmm. to elongate the proteins, but also uh, uh, controlling the heat and using a slurry and what was the other thing? Oh, the Velveeta, of course, well, which mean, has lots Velveeta's of- Velveeta's magic. Yeah, it, it has tons of stabilizers. And then it doesn't have much flavor though. It's a great flavor, I love it. Yeah. It doesn't have much, so that's why we add, what was that, white cheddar? Yeah, just to perk it up a little bit. Yeah, so then you add a little bit- Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack, 
just to give it a little bit so more tang. dimension. Yeah. What do you think? Is it queso? I think it's queso. I'm going in with a Frito. Oh, that's so smart. Ooh, steamy. Let me try that. Mm, mm -hmm. not, not one to be left out. And it goes so low with the bloomin'. Because that's so rich. And spicy. I'm mm -hmm. like ready to mm -hmm. wash it down right now. It's like rich and salty. And then this is like a really refreshing way to cut that. We're, hit, we're hitting all the taste receptors right, yeah. right now. We got, yeah. we got salty, we got spicy, mm -hmm. and then we got sweet, and we got citrusy. Yeah. You know, so sweet, sour, Everything's spicy. happening. That's a great combination. Yeah, Love yeah. that. I would, even, I would even say that if we, they weren't sponsoring us right now. I would say that's a great combination. I just kind of <laughs> want to sit down with the queso and the Fritos and the beer. Good, good night. I'll see you later. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay. do I toss this together first, or do I just put it in here and pour it over? I don't know. This is, that, this is your part. I'll just read your directions. I would put the broccoli in the pot. <laughs> OK, I'll have the broccoli in the pot. Combine, combine in a bowl. Why this is, why this is when it becomes your bowl? recipe, actually. But OK, you know what? I yeah. think that's going to be just fine if I just put the broccoli down. Yeah, we don't need another bowl. There's already so much dishes and stuff to do with Thanksgiving. And just for reference, these florets are cold still, but they're not frozen. Yeah. That's exactly where we want them. We don't want them to be piping hot because then you're overcooking them. They're yeah, they'll get mushy. really gross in the oven. Uh, but but they're but they're still cold, but they're not frozen, and that's right where we want them. Yeah. I'm just gonna spread them out nice and even. Then I'm gonna get out of the way so you can make your spoon bread. I'm gonna just preheat my skillet. Preheat your skillet. So it's ripping hot when it's Wow, that turkey go. looks really good. <laughs> That turkey looks great. I wonder if it's, wow, 20 minutes. Damn, we're right on time. That's, 20 why, minutes left that's why you should spatchcock. Oh, and that means we, I actually have to move because you have 20 minutes to make your spoon bread. Don't use, all of it. Don't use all of it? I've just been advised not to use all this. Thank you very much, Kendall. It does look like that. a lot of cheese. Well, now we have extra. <laughs> this is, I'm about to pour it. Wait, now we have extra. <laughs> OK, I'm going to just pour this over top. Hey, Kendall, is there a pastry brush? And just try to get it in all the nooks and crannies. Make sure every florets is covered with gooey, gooey cheese. And then, yeah, we get to eat the rest of this with a spoon. The, I mean, I want this year round. It's just broccoli. Yeah, and no, this, cheese, the, 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 stuff this on is top. great for Thanksgiving because, you know, you always had broccoli casserole growing up. Yeah. Like, this is like broccoli casserole 2.0 from the Southwest, which is just a very rare thing to say that all those words. That queso is sentence. for us. That queso is for us. Let me just Am I putting this on? Right now, no. I add the. I put the. No, I put these on now. Oh no! <laughs> I didn't Throw practice. It. Wait, pastry brush. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> nice. We we did it. We got the team out here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just covering this with three Fritos, and that's what makes it a Frito pie. Even though nothing about else about this is Frito pie. I mean, it would also be Those delightful cheese. to just rip up in a bag of Fritos. Yeah, Top it with broccoli dump this and in. dump it in and yeah. eat it with a spork. That would be perfect. Must be a spork. It has to be a spork. How else are you going to eat it? No. A fork? Not no. a fork. Not a spoon. Can't, can't, can't be civilized. Use a spork. Josh Shearer mm -hmm. would agree with me. Mm -hmm. He's got a spork tattoo. You ever met Josh Shearer? Nope. Myth, myth, mythical uh, uh, chef? Over, over, over mythical. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I was just learning called, about the YouTube. He, he's, <laughs> he does a, sh a show called Food Fears, and he made he made me eat blood. He made me eat pig's blood on its own. Wait, is that is that one of your fears? Should I do a blood cilantro cake? I wouldn't cake? say fears. I just don't like it. So don't do a blood. So you're trying to kill me? All right, this Sounds is going in the oven. <laughs> so the oven's preheated to 350. Your uh, um, we're all going in at 350. Yeah, yeah. Your cakes in there, and so this guy's going to go in there as well for about 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and then in the last five minutes, I'm going to crank it up to get a little bit of browning on top. I'm going to get out of your way. It is time for you to make some Elote. spoon bread. Spoon bread. Yeah. Wow, okay. this turkey looks bananas. So for our spoon bread, Switch. we are inspired by the flavors of Mexican corn. So we've got some cotija, a little um, ancho, or is this, is this ancho? Mm -hmm. What will we do without can candle? Arbol. Chili de arbol. But you can use... You know, if you've got cayenne, you can use that too. Use whatever spicy thing you've got. Sure. So I've got my skillet preheating. We want to get it like ripping, ripping hot because I want to get a little char on that corn. Frozen corn. This is frozen corn. Yeah, you can use frozen, fresh, canned, whatever you've got. Yeah. If corn. it's canned, probably drain it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're going to wait a long time to get a char on there. Yes, definitely. Uh, and 
you know, fresh probably best, but this isn't really the time of year for corn. Or it is the time of year for corn. Is it the time of year for corn? I mean, corn? I should know. I grew up outside, of, surrounded by cornfields in Rochester, New York. It was a big corn town. So um, I've got a couple cups of milk here okay. that I'm going to bring to a simmer. And my cast iron is getting ripping hot. So we're going to char our corn in the cast iron. And in here, I'm going to cook my cornmeal with some of this chili de arbol, chili ancho. De, yeah. I forgot. Ar I already arbol, forgot. Arbol. Ar arbol? arbol? Arbol. Arbols are, are hot, aren't they? Aren't those a very hot chili? Oh yeah, this is a hot, this is hot Ooh, stuff here. Okay, let's do it. We're going for it. Spicy. I mean, I, I actually don't think it's that spicy because um, the, the corn is sweet. That was a tablespoon of sugar. It's going to have a nice balance of salty, sweet, hot. Everything's happening. That's Bit what, of salt. That's what we're all about today. We're trying to hit that balance. That balance. Because that there's such a wonderful balance done. in Blue Moon. Beautiful. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kill the oven because it's... It okay. Is, uh, this skillet is nice and hot, so I'm going to char my corn in here, and then we're also going to, we're also going to um, bake the olote in there. Minimize pots, you know? Yeah. Really, it's already, you're going to be doing a lot of dishes Thanksgiving, so. You're going to bake the olote in here. I'm going to bake the olote in there. That's going to be a great look in a cast iron, anything yeah. baked into a cast iron pan, I think is a great look. It feels very southwestern. Very. Oh, we need a bandana to tie on the handle. I have no, literally not a single bandana. Oh, this is not a bandana household, is it? No. No, it's okay. I, it used to be. Remember, I used to wear bandanas back in high school. <laughs> oh, really? I used to wear bandanas under a cowboy hat, like, because I wanted to be uh, Robert, uh, what's his name? Uh, Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we don't need to get into that. All right, so I've got my cornmeal here. And I'm going to whisk it in. Really important, make sure you're whisking and like sprinkle it from the heavens. So no clumps. For no clumps. Gotcha. Wait, no clumps here. Just a gentle, look at that, just perfectly falling like a delicate winter snow. If it ever snows again. It will. In New York. Maybe. I hope. Okay. Cornmeal. This is just regular coarse yellow cornmeal. Nothing fancy. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to cook this until it thickens up. And I'm just letting my corn stay put because I want to get really nice char so I'm not messing with it. Letting it do its thing. And we whisk. This is going to get nice and thick. And then we're going to add some eggs. Bake it. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. What, uh, what temperature are we looking for? Or not temperature, I'm sorry. What, what consistency are we looking for here? It, right now, it just, it just looks like milk. So yes. as soon as it thickens up, we're done. Because it's going to continue cooking in the oven. So okay. we're just giving it a little bit of a head start. So like how thick? Like grits? Or like, like where, where, where do we want this? I'm a asking too many questions. Than, a little lighter than grits. I'm asking too many questions, I apologize. Let's You're see. already getting some beautiful color on that corn. Yeah, I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. I want, I like with a low taste, the flavor really comes from like hitting it on the grill, getting some good color. So we wanna mimic that yeah. um, as best as we can in a cast iron. What's, uh, where's the lift come from in, this, in a spoon bread? So I, I guess spoon bread's just like a, it's like a, it's gonna be kind of like a cornbread, but looser. Yeah. Like a moist, really moist, almost like pudding, like, so there's a little yeah. bit of baking powder in there. Um, when we tested it, Kendall worked on this with me. Um, we did it with some whipped eggs. Timer. Oh, timer, could you check on the cake? Oh, please? yeah, I'll check on it. So we know the cake is done when you when it's like nice and golden. And also, I like to, I don't really like to do the cake tester situation for this because it is such a moist cake. So you want to just press it with press your fingy and see if it and see if it bounces, bounces right back. back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, where's the other of glove? I need I need more of glove support. Oh, yeah, that's popping back. Popping back. Yeah, here we'll we'll show the we'll show the folks at home. I need to try that. Here we go. Can we get a close up on this, darling? Yes. The camera operator is my girlfriend. I'm not a creep. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's important to. I clarify. watched an exercise video recently where the dude kept calling the the other trainer sweetie, and I was like, ugh. And it was his, it was his wife. So anyway, that's what we got going on here. Um, so she said to poke it. She said to poke it, and if it bounces back, and look at that, it's bouncing right back. Right back. Look Fluff that. city. No retained divots. So I like that. So now you don't have to stab it. No and need to stab it. You're not going to lose a lot of moisture. You're not going to lose steam by, by cutting a hole in it. And it's going to feel like if you put a toothpick in there, no matter what you do, it's going to be a little moist because there's so much and caramel at the bottom. Moist, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll just put this aside. We're going to We're going to let warm. it cool for like 10 minutes because if we flip it out right now, the caramel is going to run off for and sure. burn you. For sure. So My turkey's like done, so I killed the oven and we can just bring it out okay, all cool. at the same time. I can't believe how well this worked. So my, <laughs> you can see this is thickened up. Oh, yeah. I just brought it up to like a boil. I pulled off my um, corn because that was looking good. Now to this we're going to add a little butter. Nice. Butter. 
You cannot have Thanksgiving without it. Why must, even try? Must, yeah, we, we, butterless Don't. Thanksgiving? It's no, not Thanksgiving I, at all. No, no, not at all. Okay, a little butter, a little baking soda. Now, I'm going to recruit you. Yes, what do you need? Will you smear the cast iron with this uh, pastry brush and a little mayonnaise, Mayo. mayonnaise. Even, the, even though it's ripping hot? Like, what's this going to do to the mayo? It's going gonna, it's gonna to liquefy it and become like an oil, but we're just trying to grease it. Okay, And let's we're do it. going with mayo instead of oil because um, in, a, in a lote, it's always got a little mayo, so it's going to bring some tang to the party. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for the folks at home who might not have a pastry brush, is there anything else that they could use? Maybe a paper towel? It's, a, it's, a, it's it on quite there. hot, so I would just use the back of a spoon. Use the back of a spoon. If it's not even, it doesn't matter. This yeah. this is a really chill recipe, so it's going to be fine no matter what. Am I using all this? How use much all of it. All of it. All of it. That's Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's Thanksgiving. That's all right, here we got a little lime zest because there's always lime in your elote. Oh, the smell is interesting of sizzling mayonnaise. It's very interesting. Okay, so now I'm gonna gonna I want to combine the eggs into this hot stuff, but. If I just dump the eggs into here, it's going to curdle. So we're just going to do like a whisk full at a time, just like this, and pop it and whisk it up. It, this is called tempering, which sounds really fancy, but it's not. We're just slowly incorporating the hot stuff into the eggs. Otherwise, it'll just curdle and turn into a scramble. Yeah, it just it's not what we're yeah. going for. I mean, you could, if you were very, very good at you know managing temperature, you could very slowly add that and whisk the entire time. But tempering is neat, is a this great is, way. This is so easy, just, yeah, yeah just, just temper. Just, just temper, temper. okay? Isn't that, this seems like a lot of melted keep mayo. Going, keep, keep going, keep going. Okay, Schmear, schmear right. Schmear it. Schmearing. Just keep schmearing. I'm schmearing. And then once you get, you finish that schmear, um, sprinkle, this is a quarter cup of cotija cheese. Okay. Sprinkle it all over the bottom. Just coat and it's gonna get just nice. the bottom of the sides too. If you can get the sides, go for it. But right, it, that pan's really hot, so it'll probably be a little difficult. But, um, Difficult is my middle name. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so I'll try that out. What are okay. you doing over here? So I'm just, I'm incorporating my cornmeal milk mixture into my eggs. So now that it's like most of it's in there, the temperature's brought up, we don't really have to be that delicate anymore. We can just whisk it up. And I'm going to put this back into this pot because this bowl's a little small so we can get a good... We have some room. We're going to add corn and cotija into here. And then it's going to go into that prepared skillet and bake up. Um, if you don't have a skillet, you can do this in a bowl, in, a, in any kind of like pan or whatever. Pie but it's, pan or... Yeah, anything you've got. But the skillet is nice because we're going to make sure it gets really nice and brown on the edges and the bottom and all that. Okay. I, I skipped the sides because there's just barely enough cotija for the bottom here. That's good. You're good. Okay, thank you. Okay. There all right, is. so... Now I'm going to add most of the corn. I'm going to hold back on a little bit so we got a little garnish. Yeah. Same deal. Most of the cotija. We'll hold back on something for the top, you know? We yeah. want to make it look nice. It's the holidays. It's the holidays. The holidays. People, come on. Have Kendall raised her arms, so I was like, did I do something wrong? <laughs> yeah, you have the same move for excited as you do for like, wait, Concerned. don't do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, now this is just going in, and we're putting this in the oven at 350 as well. And that is our spoon bread. Beautiful. How long is this going to bake for? This is going to take about 25 minutes. All right. And it's going to come out like a custardy kind of you know, It's going to poof a little. It's going to yeah. poof. It's going to be a little brown. And then it's a uh, beautiful color. The the mayo is going to lift up and come around the sides and like make a really nice fatty crust. Do you want me to put it in or do Please. you want to do it? Thank you. you want to do the honors? Okay. I'll do it. Yeah. So I'm just going to hold on to this stuff. We're going to finish it off with this corn cotija, a little fresh lime, maybe a little bit more chili pea. A little chili pea. Little chili pea. My signature. That's a Breaking Bad reference, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking, yes, bra is. Breaking Bad reference. That's a show I know. I don't know a lot of shows, but I know that one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the only way to get through quarantine is rewatch Breaking Bad. Here we go. Bringing these over. Okay. We did it, guys. We did it. We freaking oh, sorry. did it. Now okay. we wait. Now we wait. But I'm going to grab the turkey up because, folks, let your turkey rest at least 45 minutes after it comes out of the oven, at least, okay? We're not even gonna carve it today because it has to rest, otherwise it's going to be in a pool of its own juices. Not this carving it today? No, well, I mean, not uh, live for the people. Oh, oh. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna grab this out. Is there, here we go. There's the missing gloves that I've been missing for so it's long. It was there the whole time. <laughs> I don't know if that's Like good. so many romantic comedies. It was right in front of me the whole time. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna pop the turkey out real quick. You mind if I? Yeah. I'm gonna get, what's, where's center? Is this good in center? 
All right. God, I know my center. Okay, here we go. And oh, whew, hot, hot eyes again. Feast your eyes on this. Wow. Now that's a bird. Yeah. Brown. And brown you don't, town. You don't get brown crispy no, skin you don't. like that. Like even in between the thigh and everything. Yeah. I mean, and that didn't take very long at all. Let me, How let me long? get real close. Was that an there. hour? That took. We put that in at uh, about 5:45. So, really? No, that can't be right. So it can't be done. But <laughs> did you let me let me t no, I didn't, I didn't temp it. Let me it temp it. I mean, this look, this is look, this is looking. I'm excited to see that. This is what I'm here for. Where's uh, oh, where's the where's the the thermopen? The thing for sticking into the thing. Uh, here I got a thermometer here. Hang the on, veggies hang on. really nicely brown too and cooked down, and that's gonna be so tasty. Right, even if it's not 165, we'll just say it is. We'll lie to the people. <laughs> Here we go. In Here the we thickest go. part of the breast. It's the moment of truth. Oh, actually, I'm not even. I'm not even joking. It is one. Nailed it. Look That's at that. One sixty-seven in the thickest part of the that breast. That couldn't be more perfect. Boom. And I bet I'm willing to bet the thighs are ten 172. degrees higher. That's going to be one seventy-two. That's my guess. Oh, one nut. I mean, you can't overcook thighs. I, I don't That's think you good. can. I actually. One eighty-six. That's perfect, perfect for dark meat. Honestly, That's perfect. Otherwise, you got slippery yeah. dark meat, which sucks. Yeah, all like the tendons and stuff have had time yeah. to. Oh, well, you this know. needs to rest for at least 45 minutes. So, beer break? What do you think? Beer break. Let's do it. We earned it. And also, uncovered. Do not... Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uncovered. Do not cover it with foil. You're going to ruin the skin. Yeah, you work um, so hard to get it so nice and crisp. And it's not going to cool down. I think that's why people tent it. They think it's going to get too chilled. Yeah, yeah. But it's not going to cool not. down. It's this not is gonna still cool going to be... If you wait 45 minutes to cut this, you are going to be burning your fingers still because it's so hot. It's going to be the perfect temperature. Can we pour it with this still here? It's very festive, right? Yeah. Right, I'm going to pour us a fresh beer. Let me get... Well, I'm going to pour you a fresh oh, beer. Yeah, right. I'm going to go for a fresh beer. <laughs> Why not? Nice okay. and chill, frosty. This, this came it's, out really lovely. It's in your contract that I pour you a fresh beer. Okay. <laughs> so crazy. So, here we go. Uh, I need two fresh glasses. Now, I've been... I've been instructed in the art of the pour. The art of the pour, yes. yes very I've been important. studying in the art of the pour. And this is a great technique for beer in general, but especially for blue moon. Should we each pour one? Yeah, Should absolutely. I do a pour situation? Absolutely, okay, of course. Cool. Why would, I'm being so selfish, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> so first thing we have to do is roll the beer, mm -hmm. which is hold it sideways and go like this. Oh, we don't do it on here like no, this? No, 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 because it'll, it'll foam it up to me. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. So just sideways and go like this. I have not ever done this before. It's because it's an unfiltered beer. Sediment that we want to distribute mm -hmm. throughout the beer. We don't want it to be all stuck in the bottom. So we're That's giving it a roll. That's how you get that like, beautiful like, cloudy glow. Exactly. Yeah. So you're rolled up now. And we have a rinsed glass. We rinse this off camera, trust me. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to rinse the glass because any dust particles or anything in there like that not only is going to ruin your beer drinking experience, it's going to ruin your nice foamy, the foamy head at the top of the beer. You don't want that. Yeah, yeah. So now, then, we do want some foam. So I, the first few tries, do I just... Do you have a bottle opener? Did you do that with your it's hands? Twist, it's a twist. It's a twist it's up. It's a twist off. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm now I'm really sold because who can ever find their bottle opener? Exactly. Well, I keep one in my keychain, but that doesn't <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, so uh, at first I poured it like here, but that uh -huh. didn't give me enough head. So uh -huh. I'm going to pour from a little bit higher like this. 45 degrees. 45 degrees. And then once we start getting about halfway, I'm going to turn it. And that should give me pretty nice. It should go all the way up to the top. So it wasn't perfect, but it was pretty nice. And then, of course, we're garnishing. Is the glass supposed to be for the bottle? Wait, I'm confused. The glass. <laughs> now, now straighten it out and just dump it. Dump it. There you go. Yeah, that way you're going to get a little bit of foam on top. And, and now another it. snack. And now we got some orange slices because it's like soccer practice. Here we go. I'm going to, may I garnish you? Yes, please. This goes traditionally on this side of the glass. OK, cool. I'm learning so much today. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I learned a lot about the beer. I learned that it was invented in 1995. Uh, that uh, the, the, uh, the founder was the first person to throw an orange wheel on there and make it iconic. I mean, when I think beer of Blue facts. Moon, I, I always think about the orange. And uh, you know, it kind of looks like a moon. Is that what they were going for? That it's an orange moon on your beer? Well, wouldn't it be an orange moon? Like, like you know, when sometimes when the moon rises, Har like a harvest, harvest moon. moon, harvest moon. Yeah, harvest yeah, yeah, yeah. moon. Well, it's it's a it's a wheat beer, so harvest makes that sense. makes perfect sense. I don't know if that's the facts, and but uh, I think they want us to. You, should I top it up with a little little extra to get it all the way up to the yeah, top? Yeah, yeah, make it nice and yeah. picture perfect. Full full glass. Okay. 
I like the the art of the port. It makes the whole drinking experience feel really. Yeah. Any kind of any kind of um, ritual when it comes to yeah. having a beer. Yeah. Makes it feel beer, really special. It makes it feel exciting. And there we go. Thank you. Make sure that we have a little bit more than a single beer. And you'll notice that we're drinking responsibly tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have had two beers throughout the course of cooking. And we encourage you to drink responsibly as well. To celebrate responsibly. Is that the better terminology? <laughs> Either way, be responsible. Just be responsible. Just okay? always be responsible. The it's the man. responsible thing to do. Cheers. <laughs> I'm going to throw my orange wheel in there because it's being unwieldy. I'm going to eat that. There's your snack. Don't waste it. Mm -hmm. Ah. And that's going to go really nice with the coriander that we put. We put a compound butter in here for mm -hmm. anybody who's just joining us. We rubbed the whole turkey down with a compound butter that was heavy on cumin and coriander. Coriander is a major aspect in Blue Moon, so it's going to play real nice with that. Yep. It played real nice with the uh, queso because it's spicy yep, yep. and it's pickly and it's briny. Yeah, we've got, we got queso to spare. Yeah, in fact, it's, uh, but we don't have any handle? chips. We have no chips. What about ramen? Would it, that be good if we that just sounds raw ramen? really good. Oh, yeah, there yeah. we go. Oh, this little bag of Fritos. <laughs> this is guy doing This is it? a no-waste household. You know, I'm, you keep every last bit of I'm chips. very curious how many Fritos are in here that I, I somebody didn't want to just two. eat. You know, this is a, this is a, this oh, is a good portion. Nice. Yeah, this okay. is a responsible portion. Okay, well. Snack responsibly. Here we go. How do you do this, though? How do we not burn our fingers? You know um, what I would do sometimes is just um, when I'm having a dip with Fritos is to have it with a spoon. <laughs> well, luckily, you brought all the spoons. <laughs> Ow. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one more thing about uh, Blue Moon, that their home is now at the Rhino Brewery, where the brewmasters continue to develop new innovations. Uh, you can also find a ton of other uh, t uh, beers on tap there that aren't found at retail. So I'm, I'm excited to visit one day. Mm -hmm. um, and as for new innovations, like... So many new innovations tonight. That's all we're doing is new no, innovations that's what, this That's piece. what the theme of the evening is. Brightness. Brightness. Uh, brightness and uh, vivid. What was it? The two things that you can't be allergic brightness? to. Brightness? Color, color and brightness. Sunshine? Color and brightness. Vibrance. Vibrance. Mm. <laughs> color and vibrance. This is a vibrant beer. Speaking of vibrancy, we should flip out that cake. Ooh. See how lovely let's the do top it. Let's is. Do it. Let's yeah. Do it. Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, let me uh, Can we move the turkey? Well here, you do it because this is your this is your baby. So it's a big moment. Why don't you do it? Alrighty, oh. let's I'll grab. move the turkey. It's a bit warm, but that's okay. Why don't you use the hot hands? I don't really have fingers anymore. Woo! <laughs> that's a pro chef right there. That's how you can tell. Here's the amateur with his very protective gloves, and here's the pro chef who's just like, yeah, yeah. Well, for the flip, I'll, I'll use the glove for the flip. Oh, that's, that's not so bad. Okay, that's pretty nice. Okay, nope. so, okay, so we want to have a successful flip. So let's yes. run a spatula. You can tell it's nice and loose anyways that, because our, we, um, gap, we buttered it up. We smeared it. But uh, it's good to just make sure, sometimes you get like one spot that sticks, and then that's how, see that, there was a spot there that yeah. stuck. And that, if you don't take the time to do this, your cake might break. It could, yeah, just rip as it's coming out of, out of the pan. Yeah. You want me to hold this over top and you flip it? No, no, no. I'm a solo flipper. Okay. This is the one. You're just gonna. Bonk. I'm just gonna go okay, for it. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, stand yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Here, let me get this the key to here. flipping is to move with confidence. Oh. Yeah, must okay. be swift. You must not fear. Don't fear the flip. Don't fear. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. You didn't. I didn't see any fear of that. There was no fear. Thing. The cake can tell. Let's and see. And perfect. perfect. Look at that. We lost a few rinds, we but lost we can just add them Let's just dump them right dump there. Dump them right back on there. top. I'll, no big I'll, deal. I'll help. This is my job is helping. So you can see there's some caramel that's running off the edge, and that's why we waited a few minutes before flipping, because that would have just, the, the oranges would have just slid right off if we did it when it was ripping hot. But this is a really nice cake to have warm or cold. Yeah. Enjoy it now. I mean, this is, looks Enjoy good. It like later. it's going to be amazing warm. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be very good with Blue Moon because Definitely. it's all this, all this yeah. orange here. And Blue Moon's good with orange. Do the math. Dude. Come on. How's the rest of our food happening? That's looking great. Oh, it's getting poofy. Should we crank this? Uh, yeah, why not? Let's why do it. the hell not? Let's crank it up to Let's 400. Let's see what can, what'll happen. I'm going to convect, by the way. Whoa. Look out. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. So. I'm going to eat more queso. I'm going to eat more up. queso as well. Do we have any questions from the crowd? And speaking of questions, all Super Chats tonight are being donated to 
Action Against Hunger, mm -hmm. and Blue Moon's matching up to $10,000 in donations. Where are we at, by the way, with that count? $3,600. we've raised so far. That means that we've That's raised over technically seven. Seven thousand two hundred. Good math. Dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I think that adds up. <laughs> Seven thousand two hundred dollars we've raised for charity so mm -hmm. far for Action Against Hunger. Great organization. Send us your super chats now, Sawyer. Uh, Fiore wants to know when we can get a Bucky and Clementine Christmas photo. Very difficult. Probably never. Bucky just scratched my finger literally hours ago. Get a close up. I think they would That's kill Bucky's each other. Doing it would right be like there. a fight to the death. Yeah, and Clementine. Clementine don't don't screw around. So. Clementine don't screw no, around. Okay, no. can't do it. All right. <laughs> okay, I appreciate your. I appreciate it's not, your, I don't think it's a good try. thing for um, anyone involved. Well, to get we'll those two together. So maybe in a couple of years, when you know they can behave themselves. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a question about Sola. Would you share anything about your tattoos? We know a lot about Andrew's tattoos on this channel. I just talk about what, them. What do you, you want to know about my tattoos? Anything you'd like to share. Okay, okay. So this one is a flowering dogwood. Okay. I really like the bark on those trees. But we had one in the yard growing up. I grew up in California. So we never had... Um, so the trees didn't... Um, there, were, there was no fall, really. The leaves never changed. Yeah. But we somehow had this one tree in our yard that was there when we moved in. Mm -hmm. And it was the only tree I ever saw growing up where the leaves changed, so I was really into it. And I didn't have a lot of friends, so I would just go hang out by the tree, or in the tree. That's and a just very beautiful story. And it was my best friend, and then one day, I came home from college and my dad cut it down without telling me, because no. it was rotting from the inside out, and threatening to fall over and crush the house. Oh, no. So I decided to commemorate my first friend. That's very sweet. Was that your first tattoo? <laughs> no, it wasn't. This what, one was. What we got over here? This, this is an octopus. Nice. Because they're my favorite animal. They are very cool animals. Yeah. Oct Octomoms are the most badass creatures in the sea. Really? Are they very protective? They die protecting their young. Oh, wow. What I mean is they always die. Like, oh. They stay there until they hatch. They don't eat for months. And then oh. they just die protecting them. It will make very sure that they romantic. can hatch. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's sad, but it's beautiful. Anyway, yeah. what's next? <laughs> um, let's see. What's another good one? Oh, we had a question about your gaming rig. What, what games do you plan to play with your fat new rig? I haven't played any yet because um, I'm. I, okay, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, 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 who's the name of the person? Uh, I'll look, I'll find it. But it okay, <laughs> so we're just going to find your name. Whoever your name is, I uh, asked about my gaming rig. I just uh, invested in a gaming PC. Uh, it is uh, an Intel 10 900K. Nine core processor, I think it is, hmm. is liquid cooled. I'll get over this. I don't know fast, any don't of worry. these words. It's a uh, RTX 3090, and uh, it's I, as soon as I get it up and running, I'm gonna play the prettiest game that I can get my hands on. I want ray tracing at the ears, uh, so probably like Battlefield 5 or something like that. Carson. Carson. Carson asked this. Carson, that's my answer to that question. Sorry, sorry for nerding out for a second. Next question. Uh, this is this show is just all nerding out. That's what the whole channel is. Just a couple of nerds. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> room, you were, you there's were, a room full of nerds. If you can't see, it's even nerdier behind the camera. Yeah, no, you'll see them soon. We're going to have them come They're up just here. So excited. They're so proud of being nerds. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what this channel is. Proud nerds. I love yeah. it. Favorite pie that is neither pumpkin nor apple? Um, you said I said pecan. Pecan for Thanksgiving. Rest of the year, blueberry. Do you say pe pecan? I do. I, I could have sworn you said pecan pie. Maybe I switched back and forth. I, I think I do too. I don't actually. Know. What was the, what was the other one? I'm sorry. Blueberry with Blueberry a nice streusel top. Yeah, yeah. With pecans in it. I <laughs> personally love. Ready for this one? Grape pie. Whoa. You ever had grape pie? No. They make it in in Rome, New York. <laughs> Are they and seedless? Nowhere grapes? else. They're they're uh, seeded Concord grapes. So it's super tart. Yeah. It's got that Concord flavor. Yeah. And it's like a blueberry pie. It's like a textured blueberry mm -hmm. pie, but it's like Concord gem. So good. Do you good. eat the seeds? No. They, so they, they, no, they seed them. They no, seed, they seed they, them. They, they pit them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they pit, they pit the, sorry, that's the word. <laughs> that's the verb is pit. They pit the Concord grapes and they make this super tart, beautiful, usually Amish folks are making this. I want to try this. It's so good. So is it's it like super incredible. jammy? Really jammy. Mm. Just like blueberry pie, but like when you cut it, it holds its shape entirely. Oh. Like it's, it's really, it's, that it's a wonderful good. thing. Go to Rome, New York, <laughs> or Bath. Now we have a reason to go. <laughs> um, what, what's next? Um, a lot of thanks. This. 
So just a quick thank you back to all the people who have given money and just said Yes, thanks. thank you guys so much for giving to the Super Chat. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah. All the money is going to Action Against Hunger. Blue Moon's mashing up to $10,000 for Action Against Hunger. So we really appreciate all the Super Chats. Really appreciate your generosity, especially the, wor the world being what it is today. And we, we appreciate you giving to those who really need it most right now. So to that, uh, Mark gave $100 and asked, what is with your pronunciation of sauce? I'll tell you right now. Mark uh, asked, uh, he gave $100 to ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> Mark asked, why do I say saucepan instead of saucepan? I want to know the answer to this well, one. Well, I'll too. tell you why. Yeah. That's how British people say it. Picture Gordon Ramsay saying saucepan. He doesn't yeah, say saucepan. Yeah, but you're saucepan. not British. I know. <laughs> and to wit, to mm -hmm. that end, it's to infuriate you. <laughs> Saucen. It's to make you mad. So, so I say saucepan because. Do you say aluminium? No. How well, yeah, you know, I, I, I say aluminium. Aluminium? aluminium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all in the pursuit of upsetting you, the viewer. <laughs> so, those guys are done. Should we take it out? Let's take them out. Yeah. And we're going to have a whole let's, meal here. Yeah, let's check it all out together. We can garnish up our. How are we going to get it all out here? We're I can put the turkey. It. We're going to make it fit. I can put the turkey uh, vertically. We're going to save these Fritos for later. You know we are. That's clean. Okay. Okay. Trivets. Trivets. And is there some where the hot hands? The where the hot hands go? What I, oh, here we go. Thank you. All right. Let me cross. Crossing. I'm gonna grab my casserole. I think needs like another minute. You want to take out the spoon bread? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. And garnish it up. Ugh. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Look at the way it's bubbling. Can yeah. You move that orange slice. Oh, yeah. There we go. Sorry. It got a little that. poof. Look at that. And then we got this nice sizzling that. action like, from that mayo. It's like Sean Brock made it. Like, that's like his cornbread. I don't probably. know who that is. Yeah, he's a, he's so, an, a chef Oh, in yeah, 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 yeah. I know he is. Yeah. Okay, we're garnishing it up with a little. It's nice to always put, like, whatever's inside of a thing on top of a thing so you know what it is. So everyone knows what's happening. I like that. So you, you know? should always put something that's inside of a thing on top of a thing. Yeah, it's, make it obvious to your If there was guests. cilantro in there, I'd want you to put some chopped cilantro on top I so think, I knew. Yeah. A little more cotija. Just sprinkle, sprinkle. If you don't have cotija, you could do this with feta, for sure. <sighs> Farmer's cheese. Feta, for sure. Now, oh. I recommend cilantro, but for you, we're using parsley. <sighs> so, so kind. So really kind. It's Thanksgiving, that. after all. That's you know? beautiful. That's absolutely stunning. Kendall, you did a great job on this mix. And I need chai. Do we have the chives? Oh, thank you. And then over here, we want some, you know, this is looking kind of yellow. Mm -hmm. So we want some uh, greenery over here as well. So I'm going to hit it with some fresh chopped chives. Fresh, bright. That's the theme. As much as I can, actually. I'm going to really go to town on this. There we go. Get out of there, you chives. There we go. That's got some nice fresh color on it. Ooh, we're also going to do a little spritzy squeeze spritz. Squeeze of lime, absolutely. Squeeze. Just like, just like uh, 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 elote. Like this yeah. is oh, a, a, you want to hit it with more chili pea? Yeah, I do. Let's do a where's, little where's bit the more. Chili pea? Do we have chili pea? Where's the chili pal? So this is, it's really, Thank really you. tender and custardy when you have it hot, but the next day when it's chilled, it's almost a little bit sliceable like cornbread. So I think like this is a great thing. The leftovers turn into something new for you without you doing a thing. Nice. Let's, let's hear it. We got a good question. Uh, we got uh, David from Rochester, that's Naples, New York, little brother. <laughs> oh! <laughs> he's, Ooh. Fox, thanks, Dave. he's absolutely right. That is $50 well spent, reminding me that it is not Rome, New York. It is, wait, what did you just say? Naples. Naples. It's Naples, New York. One of the, another one of the great European towns in upstate New York. Uh, I used to play you in soccer, dude. If you were in Naples, I used to play you in soccer. Um, Anyway, sorry, that's where you go to get Concord grape pie is Naples, New York. My apologies. And that was from your brother, in case you weren't. That was my, Wait, that was my brother? brother? My brother just, that was, David. that was from David Ray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So David Ray corrected me, <laughs> my brother. And, you know, this is kind of the nature of our relationship. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, he's, he's a very smart man, and he knows upstate New York far better than I do. Uh, and he's absolutely right. I thought you were just saying, that's Naples' brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like what I thought, too. Naples' native, just like, that's Naples' brother. I don't think so. Um, that's David, thank you very much for the uh, super chat. I miss you. Hello, David. I love you. Cheers. Here's Cheers. to David. <laughs> miss you, bro. We're going to miss you this Thanksgiving, but we can all sort of be together in our aloneness. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> Never mind. Well, at least we're all alone together. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's you the know? one thing we all got in common. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. We Here's did it. to you, Dave. We nailed it. That's it. Let me grab the turkey so we have like a whole. I'll just hold it. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold it. <laughs> the turkey looks great. Everything came out. I can't believe how quick that that baked in like an hour. This is a 12, yeah. 13 pound bird, and it bakes and fully. It, it's the, the glory of this. Can you move your glass? Sorry. Is this good? You can just ask her. <laughs> Everybody knows you're there. Because both of us are just like, why are they waving their hands? Can you move your hair, please, Sola? So I'm going to hold this here for the thumbnail for just a second, because I'm sure we're going to want a pretty thumbnail. And you'll see in the bottom of this tray, it, you'll see in the bottom of the tray is all these juices, yeah. nothing burned. Yeah. And we got a bunch of good fat in there that you can make the roux from. Yep, we got yep. a bunch of good... Um, uh, uh, stock in there basically mm -hmm. to make your gravy from. You have gravy magic in the bottom mm -hmm. of this. Uh, and you can snack on the onions. I love the blackened I love, onions. I love blackened onions it's too. It's my favorite. Snack. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be so tasty with the meat. Carve yeah. it up, have a bite. Yeah. yeah. What's, what time is it? We got time to dig in some stuff? Should we, should we eat? It's 7 12. Yeah, 7 12. The, the final beer break is upon us. Final beer break. Final beer break is upon us. All right, one more beer break. What, uh, let's see. Is it called beer break? Because I only see three beer breaks. Just uh, outro. Okay, that's outro. Beer. Yep, that's yeah. different. Right. We um, don't have a script. What are you talking about? No, there's no script. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm I'm tickling Jess's feet when I do this. This is. You shake the camera a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> So uh, let's see, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going to taste this in a second, we got a couple things. We first off want to thank you all so much for tuning in. Yeah. Thank you so much for all the amazing super chats, the great questions. We'll take a few more probably, you know, maybe while we're eating or something. We had fun, we raised some money, we had and fun. we had some beers. We raised some money, had what some good beer. Uh, yeah. The stream is going to be up on the channel afterwards for you to watch and share. Over uh, and over and over and over and over, over again. again. You're going to fall asleep be on watching repeat this. on Thanksgiving <laughs> yeah, Day, just like... Like your favorite yeah. song, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, watch this on repeat like you'd listen to your favorite album. And uh, uh, so if you want to cook along on Thanksgiving Day, you can just, t you just go to the channel, watch like, it. Like we're all together. Uh, and thank you again to Blue Moon for sponsoring this live stream. We encourage you all to cook along with Blue Moon this Thanksgiving. Uh, we had a great time yeah. coming up with some fun dishes that like really work with the flavors in the beer. They, they really pop. And all are, together these, like this. You ever had a Thanksgiving like this? No, I haven't. Maybe in the Southwest. Now you can. Everybody else, have you ever had a Thanksgiving like this? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what else we got? Uh, uh, I'd, I'd love for you guys to uh, try making this yourselves. You can check out the recipes and the shopping lists and all that good stuff at bluemoonandbabish.com. Mm -hmm. That's right. Bluemoonandbabish.com. There's the recipes, shopping lists, everything you need to make this yourself. Mm -hmm. I hope some of you guys cooked along tonight. I hope you cook along next week, watch it yourself. Uh, and thank you again to Blue Moon for matching all the Super Chat donations up to $10,000. What were you going to say? We're at $4,100. We're at $4,100. $4, That's not amazing. Not enough for us to eat anything lady in the tramp style. Not, any, not no, enough for me to get a, it's still, a, a Thanksgiving it's still tattoo. very generous. <laughs> not, enough, not enough for me to eat a, a head of cilantro, unfortunately. Next time we'll do it, though. Next time, yeah. And food fears. I do like that idea, though. Maybe we'll just do that for fun. I, I think it's a really good idea. Thank yeah. you. For just the, to say thank you for yeah. the four thousand. We'll we'll t we'll do it. We'll do, we'll make some foods that we're terrified to eat. I'm very excited. I want to make foods that you're terrified to eat. That's not the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares no, about no, no, the no, rules? No, that's, that's what we'll do. We'll, uh, <laughs> I think just because I don't I don't. Cake. Ugh, it's, I've already what done about a blood what about cake. A, a ravioli made with cilantro filled with blood? What if I made you a book of compliments that I gave you about nice things <laughs> that I say about you? I leave. That's her I biggest quit. fear. <laughs> okay. Because that's what I'm getting ready for your birthday. I, I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, what else? Is there anything else we, we got to hit? Or should we just eat? All right. It's let's time to do let's, this. let's uh, make, make a dish. I think yeah. I'm just going to rip off the legs so we don't have to carve anything I just, right I now. I want a wing. Okay, rip off a wing. I want a wing. Let's grab some plates. Let's yeah. do this. Okay, cool. Let's do this. Um, piping hot. I'm excited. I'm excited to dig in. I'm, I'm sure glad I'm, we I'm went I'm with sure the that parsley so that you could enjoy this. Yes, I really appreciate you, <laughs> you know, toning this down a little bit, toning down the southwestern vibes. We still have some spoons here because I took all of them. Do we need a bigger spoon for that? Probably. Okay, let me grab a bigger <laughs> spoon. I think we got bigger spoons. <laughs> Do we have bigger spoons? I got a bigger spoon wow, right here. Wow, that is a large spoon. 
All right. And I'm going to get another spoon for my broccoli uh, queso. Um, let me serve you some of this uh, spoon bread with the biggest spoon. Well, likewise, let me serve you some Ooh. of this broccoli thing. Here. Thank you. Uh huh. Ooh, look at that. Look at the, the texture it's got. It's like it got like nice lovely, fluff city. Yeah, fluffy, light. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Spoon Here, breadish. Thank you. There we go. So this is not your mama's. Uh, Definitely not. Thanksgiving. I was about to say broccoli casserole, but really all around this is not your mama's. It might be your mama's broccoli casserole. Well, maybe. Actually. I don't know your mama. No, um, I don't know your mama either. You wanted a wing. I'll, I love. You want me wing? to just oh, rip it off for you? No yeah, just rip it off. All right, here's your Pope's nose. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, here's a wing for you. Fantastic. I'm just gonna rip off. There we oh, go. Oh yeah, Beautiful. it's so crispy and golden. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a drumstick here, drummer, so I can feel like You're I'm just at all medieval the best times. Parts. My favorite place in America. Is it? No. Have you been? <laughs> uh, once back. I've in always wanted to go. College. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it looks it's, like it's, fun. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, it's not crazy or anything, but it's But fun. you get to eat turkey legs and, you really do. and holler. You really get to eat turkey do. legs and holler. Yeah. That's what I do in my free time, at least. There's so much uh, breaking of bones today. Yeah, we're really got to get in here for this guy. Yeah. Oh, come on. Where's the joint? Why can't I this find This is the joint? my struggle every time. Finding the joint. There it is. It's, there it's it is. Not, it's it's lower than you think. It's always lower than you think. Yeah, I agree. Everyone. My husband's so good at it, he can just... I can't. Ham's the best, man. Him is the best. He's the best. I'm gonna take a wing too. All right, there we go. Now mm -hmm. I have a little bit more complete plate. And uh, should we try to fit some of this on here as well? Or you know what? That's that what Thanksgiving's all about: cramming way too much yeah, food on your plate. Yeah, we gotta load it up. Way too much food that doesn't even. Oh, I, sure, I suppose. Yeah. All right, a little slicey poo. Maybe just a, <laughs> maybe just a slice. <laughs> it, 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 for cleanest slices, you should wipe in between each cut. But you know what? It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. Load me up for a tendo. Who Thank cares? You. Yeah, I'm going to turn that towards the camera because it looks so beautiful. I'm going to grab us some forks too. We need forks. I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's really fluffy and light, and that's because we use that. It's beautiful. The crumb is perfectly even. Like, there's no gaps or, or holes or anything like that. Thank Here's you. A fork. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this lime squeeze for my, my spoon bread. Yeah. Oh, oh well, okay. you know, there's another lime. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> see if I can do this without dropping it. Nailed <laughs> okay. it. I did it. Okay. Don't lick your fingers on camera, Andy. That's weird. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go into the casserole first. Yeah, I'm going to try this as well. Because it's, it's all cheese and oh, that's what I want. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. -hmm. What's not to like? So good. Spicy. Getting the spice. Mm -hmm. All that cayenne. Mm -hmm. All those jalapenos. Hit me. Now I'm going to try your spoon <coughs> bread. <coughs> broccoli and cheese is such a classic combo. Oh, so you, you can't beat it, broccoli and cheese. No, you can't. Mmm. Mm. Punch a lime. The lime. First thing you get. Wakes it up. Mm -hmm. Any kind of corn casserole you ever make, you should put some lime zest in there. Because mm -hmm. it's so, it, it, it is at home in there, but it's never something yeah. you think to add to corn casserole. Mm. It's so good. And the texture is so light and fluffy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm, I've been, I've waited long enough. I'm going into the Pope's nose. You know, I didn't, I don't think I put any of the butter in that. I'm sorry. So it's not going to be representative of the I whole turkey. I don't care. It's so crispy, mm. perfectly cooked. The fat really rendered out. Mm. I wish Happy. they would just sell you these. Pub snoozes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gotta be some. Mm -hmm. leave, us, leave us a comment. Mm. If, you, if you sell pub snoozes, we'll come to your store. Mm -hmm. mm. Dark meat's cooked perfectly. I'm eating it like an animal. Um, it's cooked perfectly because I'm trying not to eat Because of the spatchcock. Full. That's spatchcock, baby. That's the move. Because of the spatchcock, mm -hmm. the thighs and drumsticks got a lot more heat, mm -hmm. and they need more heat than yep. the breasts do. The breasts are very tender, very delicate. You want to cook those to 160, I think, personally. Mm -hmm. I think legally you got to say 165, but if you cook it to 155, it'll come up to 165 as it was. I like 155. Me too. But Just thighs, right. it's very hard. Very, thighs and drumsticks, very hard to overcook. You want to get these. That's some crispy skin. You probably hear it from my mic. Um, I'm gonna try it now. Here, I'm gonna do it real close to my mic too. It's so crunchy. Oh, I got a bone. Sorry. <laughs> Hang on. It's really 
<laughs> Nicely seasoned and flavorful, mm -hmm. even without doing a dry brine overnight. Yeah. So it would be only better. Yeah, that's only going to improve it. Mm -hmm. Any turkey or chicken or duck or anything that you make, make sure you do a dry brine. Make sure you let it dry out in the oven, or, I'm sorry, in the fridge uncovered, mm -hmm. not the oven. Not, not at the all. oven. Overnight. We're not proofing bread. But um, mm. I think this is successful. Mm -hmm. We're going in for Huge cake. success. I'm trying to have the cake, yeah. Come here. Very fluffy, very mm. tender. Mmm. Mm. So much citrus. That orange is front and center. Mm -hmm. And the caramel, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because of the beer or what, the caramel is so super gooey. It is because of the beer. I mean, we didn't need to add corn syrup or anything, and it gets really nice, sticky texture. Milk doesn't that beer. just sound like a recipe that you'd click on? Blue Moon Caramel Orange Upside Down Cake? Like that I rocks. would click on that, yeah. I, I'm clicking on it as we speak mm -hmm. with my mouth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, I'm super thrilled with all this stuff. And as you can see, granted there were two of us, but we made it in about two hours, which means that one of you could make it in three, four hours? Well, they don't have a candle. They don't have a candle. You can make it in five or seven hours. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. These are all I think three hours. These are all very super yeah. doable, very easy recipes. Yeah. I hope you guys give them a try for yourselves. Thank you so much to Blue Moon for sponsoring this live stream. Uh, you got any fi final thoughts? No, thank you. Thank you to everyone who donated. Thank you so much. Um, Action Against Hunger, such a great cause. And um, 4700 4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, keeps going up. Which means that we've really raised Almost 10? 9,000. 9, That's not math I can do. 9,400. Yeah. 9,400. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Blue Moon matching yeah. all contributions up to $10,000. So we've raised almost 10 grand tonight. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. And I want to say a special thanks to our crew. Guys, you want to, you want to come, up, come on around here and maybe say hello to people? Our <laughs> team of nerds. Our, our nerds after our own hearts. <laughs> Thank you guys, and uh, yeah, we got a, we got our crew out here helping us out. Get it nice and wide, go wide. Where's the edge of frame? Would you say? Uh, yep, right there. Right there. Go back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah, right there. there it is. Here, I'm gonna. I'll go over to the edge of frame. Eric, right, you want to come around this way? Is this, this is Sawyer. You all know Sawyer. He's my <laughs> oldest friend from high school. He's been fielding your questions. I'm sorry you couldn't hear him, but he's been in the back taking care of business. Kendall, come on We got on Kendall. Up. Kendall. Come on Kendall's down. the newest addition to the team. She just joined us as a kitchen producer. Made possible by Kendall. Made po this is really made possible Entirely. by Kendall. <laughs> she, did, she did all the yeah, me's. Yeah, she yeah. is incredible. She helped develop recipes. Sure. She's a rock can star. Then we got Jess, my girlfriend, right over here. She's been opping main camera. I was tickling, tickling her feet earlier. The whole time. Ish. The whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't believe you kept it That's why it took together. so long, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And we got Brad Cash over here. Brad Cash mm -hmm. is helping us out. Uh, a Nashville native, he is here to help us shoot and put these things together and helps us edit. edit. He, he is one of the, he and Jess edit together, Stump Solo together. They are the ones who make the magic happen there. It's the only reason I'm entertaining. <laughs> Not <laughs> true <laughs> at all. <laughs> and then we got Solo, who Hello. crushed it tonight. This is your first live stream? First live stream. Amazing. <laughs> crazy, crazy awesome. Awesome stuff. We did it. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy everybody. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you guys Thanksgiving. so much for coming through. We're this now. <laughs> be sure, to, be sure to, to enjoy Thanksgiving responsibly. With Blue Moon. With Blue Moon. Cheers. The bright light flavors of Valencia orange. I feel like that's food in my beard. Probably do. I do? You let me... <laughs> no, <I'm serious>. <laughs> <laughs>